Good morning everybody and welcome to the second day of the World Schools Festival 2022. It's semi-final day and uh, we are kicking off with Sebra School versus Rugby Travel Academy. Sebra of course from England lost a very close match against Millfield and uh, RTA uh, beat the Odyssey in its first round robin match uh, to get into the uh, plate uh, shield competition. So this is a shield semi-final. We've got, uh, after this, we've got RTA versus Odyssey for the Open. And then we've got St. Michael's and Trinity at 11.45. And then 3 p.m. we've got a, a wonderful match, Grey College Uh, against Cardiff and then at 4.25 we've got Hamilton Voice versus Millfield. So two exciting teams about to play. Uh, on the Sebra's on Sebra's uh, on the RTA we've got uh, Ethan Maritz, Stefan van der Hever, Christopher van Gervuren, four Pedri van Herden, five Francois Marais, six uh, Jacques Demeur, Seven, Jaden de Chizus. Eight, Daniel Menchis. Nine, Chad Hoffmeyer. Ten, Duane de Toy. Eleven, Giovanna Hendricks. Twelve, Tehandra Renech. Thirteen, Lehausen Wanger. Fourteen, Francois Kallitz. And fifteen, David van der Meer. Uh, and are headed up by coach Len Oliver, who looks after the RTA. Just a little bit about on, on the RTA. Uh, it's a travel academy that helps uh, young athletes develop skills and offers a world-class facilities uh, uh, for many boys looking for overseas, such as Portugal and uh, France. So we kick off, and Sebra already taking possession from its kickoff. It spins it out, using the forwards to punch through. Going wide off to the right-hand side. Players to look out for in Sebra is uh, number 10, uh, 15, Tom Burton, number 9, Will Wooden, number 5, Finn Baker, and uh, 22, Ben Redshaw, all of, all of whom play England under 18s. So, first scrum down of the game. Let's see who the powerhouse is today. So, uh, in the front row for uh, RTA, we've got um, Moritz van der Ver and Van der Uren. I'm hoping getting the names right. It's very difficult. So, first scrum of the match. RTA put in. So, uh, coach Len Olivier uh, was a former Bulls player and um, has played many years playing in France and uh, Portugal. That's put together a, a really interesting squad for this uh, tournament. So, here's the scrum. Pretty evenly matched with Sebra getting the push on, getting the nudge. So, Tatoy clears. Number 13 with the ball, Luke Parry takes it in, sets it up. Wooten passes. Taken in by Tommy ha Johnny Hansen. And uh, the referee is called an offside by the looks of things. Taken quickly by Sebra. Spun out, number 12 steps. Alec Martin. Picked up, forwards punching a hole in. Two goes over. That's Will Holmes at number nine, Sebra. So here comes Finn Baker. Driving it forward. Will Holmes recycles. Taken hard in by Kane James. Again offside by RTA. Looking to press but perhaps uh, a little bit too enthusiastically. So number 12, Alec Martin. Looking to kick for touch to put Sebra down as near to the five metres as possible. That's a great nudge. About uh, 10 metres out, Sebra. 
Again, you can see it's a brisk breeze today, so that's going to affect the kicking and indeed the passing on these long passes that these uh, young, young talents want to uh, showcase. So, five man line out called. That's Aidan Stewart. Baker goes up. Maul is set. Good. Big push. Still going. Johnny Hansen with the ball. Working hard. And it's a try for Sebra. Three minutes in. And the powerhouse of Sebra is working hard already. However, the referee is just having a quick discussion with the linesman. Oh. It's uh, saying it was not forward. So, no try. And it's a scrum down. Into RTA's favour. So... Number nine, Chad Hoffmere to put it in for RTA under a bit of pressure in their red zone. Looking uh, to get a good pass out to Detroit who will then uh, hopefully clear his lines. Sebra pushing early. Asking the front row to get closer. An enthusiastic set of forwards from both sides, looking to get to grips early. So, here we go. Big scrum by Sebra, and they win the penalty. So huge, they've taken it quickly, they're driving forward, and they scored. RTA sleeping a little bit, turning their backs, rather than actually concentrating. So, Sebra, five, uh, five nil up, at a five and a half minute stage. Successfully scored by Daniel, sorry, I beg your pardon, uh, Kane James powerful uh, running forward and to take the kick it's going to be Alec Martin did some very powerful runs Kane James against Millfield and this young man Alec Martin kicked extremely well in that match is he going to continue his form difficult kick with the wind against him It's looking good, and the wind's just blowing it away. So, great effort. 5 0, Sebra. The referee today is Araf Zahwan from Malaysia. We chatted to him last night. Tremendously happy to have this opportunity to uh, referee, and uh, they're doing a cracking job, keeping the game flowing. So. Detroit restarts. Taken in by uh, Sebra just beyond their 22. Wilhelm feeds. The back line starting to turn it on. Coming out up to the 10 metre line. Quick recycle. Holmes feeds it out. Again, using their forwards to, to punch a hole into the defence of RTA. And it's a penalty. Great jackling by uh, RTA. Sebra not there quick enough. Tommy Triggs holding on for a little bit too long. There's Len Oliver, coach with the glasses. Olivia, sorry. Detroit tries to put it down and does a beautiful kick just around the five metre 
So here come RTA. A lovely kick that, using the wind to put some real pressure on Sebra in its spread zone. RTA had a very good forward uh, move from its line out. Let's see how Sebra copes with it. Zebra down early, packing hard. RTA now regroup, sets the sets the formation, and that's uh, number Charlie Turnbull all of, all over it for Zebra, causing a bit of disruption there. Ball goes to ground, and the referee saying offside, penalty to RTA. Some handbags at dawn, number seven. Tommy didn't hear the referee's whistle, I think. Sorry, Charlie Turnbull didn't hear the referee's whistle. Uh, gets escorted back to his lines and has a quick chat with the referee. So, order restored. Finn Baker just checking with the referee. RTA going to run it. Putting up a big, big shove on now. Within about a metre of the line, actually on the line, I think. Stiff defence from Sebra. It's going to go wide. Hoffmeyer pass it out. Problem is, this is slower than that. Hmm? Problem is the cameras are not keeping up. So knock on. I'm getting that, I'm looking at that. So scrum down five around the five meter mark for Sebra. Will Holmes to put the ball in. Will Wooten has been uh, is on the bench. He's the England uh, nine. Again, these forwards are a little bit enthusiastic. Needs to listen to the referee's call. Referee Arif taking control. Ball in by Holmes. Spins out. Looks like Sebra wanting to get up to the 22, so get a good clearance with this wind. Again, looking to run it wide. Off to Wilbur. Blackham, Blackham, and taken into the touch. And that's going to be a Sebra ball. RTA using the 16, 16th man, the touchline well. However, I think they uh, got a hand to it as it was going out, so it's a Sebra ball. Line out. Johnny Hansen Johnny Hans to throw in. Nice line out. Junior Newton flings it wide, pass it on. Here goes uh, Kane James. Good interception by uh, RTA, who are now driving forward. Sebra needs the group. It's a penalty advantage to RTA. As they now spin it wide. Taken in by Francois Moray. And a high tackle called by referee Arif against Sebra. So, uh, RTA putting the pressure on against Sebra in their uh, 22. Coaches start to regroup. Guys, keep it away from the coaches. Guys, I don't need boys. Eric, I don't need the pictures about the coaches. I, I don't need the pictures about the coaches because I'm missing, I'm missing the match. Yeah. So, just been looked at. 
Can't see his shirt number. Zebra parents, do you know who that is? All right, so, so it's uh, Junior Newton who's down. 21 coming on to place him, that's Josh Harbour. So just to, remind every, just to remind everybody, we're playing rolling subs here. So players can come on and off as the coaches see fit, trying to ensure player welfare, because this is a uh, three matches over six days. The 30 minute halves with 15 minute water intervals of two minutes. So really concentrating on player welfare, all the coaches chatting to them, ensuring everybody gets plenty of game time. So RTA takes a quick move, straps it out. Retains the ball well. Chad Hoffmeyer feeds it out to the backs. 13, takes it in. Lots of screams. Hein Tyelken. So obviously a bit of a high tackle there. Sorry, tips him down. So that's most probably uh, going to be a decision by the referee. So how the card works, the card systems, it's a yellow card, it's six minutes off, it's a red card, then they're off for uh, the game, but can be re reinstated in another game. And it's a it's a yellow card. So Sebra regroup. RTA looking to use their forward pack to dominate and uh, get a hold of uh, a score at the 15 minute mark. So water break most probably called after this uh, phase of play. Nicely taken. Zebra put the pressure on, they've won it back. Good charge down. However, scrum five. Charge down goes over line, scrum five, RTA advantage. Sebra on a lot of pressure. Supporters there, keen to look at their, uh, I think these are supporters from RTA. So, Chad Hoffmeyer to put in for RTA. Five metres out from the Sebba try line. Big scrum. Puts it on, big scrum by Sebra, putting the pressure on. Hoffmeyer gets it away. Goes out. And it's a try, and they go in the corner. It's five all. Great little move off the park. RTA taking advantage of a man down on Sebra's uh, back line. With the full back off. Sebra not adapting uh, quickly enough. So the Fafa Kalitz goes over. And uh, David Van Mern, about to, Van Vern, sorry, Mern, about to take uh, the conversion. Very successful kicker on Tuesday. Dealing in similar conditions, can he maintain his 100% record? Or have, have I just given him the commentator's curse? So, Sebra regroup. The officials are from um, South Africa, New Zealand, Malaysia. So, uh, a nice uh, broad experience of uh, 
refereeing from the four corners of the rugby world. And he's successful. Wow there, what a kick. So RTA, seven points up against Sebra. 18 minutes out. Are we going for a water break? Yep, the referee calls a water break. So, Coach Oliver, is it off? Coach Oliver uh, takes his RTA. Second kickoff of the first half, playing the second phase. Sebra kicks off, taken in by RTA, sets the platform with uh, Chad Hoffmeyer looking to take it back to Detroit. Detroit puts the big kick in using the wind, fielded by Billy Burkett who again takes it in, sets the platform. Sebra over it quickly. Big clear out from RTA. Will Holmes lets it, lets it out wide. James passes it through. Sebra on the, on the attack now. Again, right up against the touchline, spreading the ball wide. So, Sebra protecting the ball well. Oh, under pressure though. Ref says play on. Now no, he uh, calls calls the knock on. Alec Martin under a bit of pressure, pass right down at his feet. So, uh, referee going across the linesman, Crags. Having a quick discussion. Looks like he sees something off the ball. He's asking for I think it's uh, Javad Hendricks. So we've got uh, number 22, 
uh, Ben Radshaw from Sebron, one of the most uh, exciting young talents in England at the moment. And he's giving a yellow card to uh, Finn Baker for uh, doing something off the ball. So Sebra losing their discipline a little bit. Big nudge down takes them to the, uh, beyond the 22. As uh, Stefan van der Verbe prepares to throw in, and RTA sets its line. Finn Baker coordinating uh, the line out with Sebra, losing its uh, composure a little bit. Number eight from uh, RTA, Daniel Merker, big drive, goes out to the back line with Detroit feeding, uh, waiting and controlling things, controlling play, using the forwards to set the platform to recycle. Chad Hoffmeyer passes it to number 23, Daquan Alberts. 25, oh, I have got a 25 here. And with the pressure, they earn the penalty And uh, the captain, Fafa Kalditz, calls for uh, a kick at goal, which will be taken by David von Merner to extend the lead, hopefully, to 10 points to five. Sebra having to put uh, some effort on. They've got, uh, I think they're down to 13 players at the moment. <laughs> with uh, or a yellow card just before the first half. So that's six minutes out of this half. And now they've taken another out of this session. They've got another six minutes. So they'll be playing most of this uh, second session of the first half with 13 players. Conversion successful. Sebra 5, RTA 10, extending its lead. Five more minutes left in this uh, first half, second session of the first half, then we have a five minute water break. David van der Meer with a successful conversion. Sebra coaches calling the action. Simon Mulholland, high kick, hanging kick, bit of blocking by the uh, RTA, is it? Nice offload, RTA on the thing, but referee has picked it up. Uh, linesman saying it went into touch. Martier holding their ground at that kickoff. So throw in for Sebra. Johnny Hansen to start proceedings again. Finn Baker leads the charge. Up he goes. Ball went through the hands. Now uh, Sebra looked to spin it wide. Over quickly. Ball recycled. Baker takes it forward, big drive, still going. Big tackle from uh, Christopher Jancy Vervan. Sebra recycle. Starting to get a bit of continuity now. And that's uh, 21, Josh Harbour busting the tackles. Will Holmes recycles. Flat ball. However, referee calls a penalty 
for a high tackle. So they're going back down to just a metre beyond the 22. And Alec Martin looking to put it in the corner for uh, Sebra to start its attack against the RTA. This wind is uh, again uh, causing havoc for these line kicks. So Johnny Hansen restarts. Six man line out called by Sebra. Players arrive from RTA. Referee's happy. He's got the distance between the lines. Up it goes. That was number 18 taking that, Jacob Butterhill. And the drive starts from Sebra. RTA are up to feasting it. However, crossing in the line out causes a, causes a, a penalty for RTA. Sebra not commuter, communicating very carefully. And Detroit clears uh, the lines just to about where the line outs, uh, first line out started. The RTA coaches shouting the orders from the from their uh, area <laughs> Stefan van der Verheerd to put the ball in here he goes five man line out called number four was going to go up but it's taken by Sebra great in such by Finn Baker who now the Sebra releases their backs. Fours are not there. He's, he's a bit isolated. However, they retain the ball well. Holmes puts it out to Alec Martin, who steps inside, still with the ball. Penalty offside. Alec Martin takes it quickly. Into Bradshaw. Holmes resets and passes it out to number 18, Jacob Butterhill, who takes it into contact. The referee calling, not releasing the tackle. Holmes takes it quickly. They haven't gone to meet a great sniping run by Holmes. And again, they batter over and wow, that's a good response. James comes back on from his yellow card and immediately Sebra responds just before the half time, taking the score to to 10 points all, with conversion to come for Sebra. So, number 21, Josh Harbour to uh, take the kick for Sebra. Sebra. On the 22. About a metre to the left of the 15 metre mark there. Again, the wind, uh, 5 to 10 knots. So, it's a, it's, it's a difficult one. And he successfully converts it to put Sebra in the lead. 12 points to 10 as we hit the halfway... 30 minute mark and so it's half time I've got 22 here so Bradshaw is sorry 21 is Bradshaw yeah Redshaw, sorry. Okay. Is Redshaw number 21? Yeah, he came. They must have swapped jerseys. Okay. He came on as fullback now with the red card. So he needs to click it. So Captain Redshaw's 21. Was it a red card or was it a yellow card? Oh, sorry, it was a yellow. So he came on.
So as uh, the two sides in this enthralling first match uh, in, in the Shield competition go in and talk it over in the half time, we've got uh, some great rugby coming up for you. Uh, the next match will be RTA versus Odyssey for the Open competition and then after that we've got St Michael's versus Trinity who are uh, both looking for their first victory in this uh, World Schools Festival. And then we've got an exciting match at uh, 3 o'clock, Grey College versus Cardiff Vale. Um, and then we've got uh, the last match which is uh, another big one for in the Cup which will be Hamilton Voice versus Millfield at uh, 4.25 kickoff. Um, so on the Sebra, we got Coach Simon Mulholland. I was talking to him over uh, dinner a couple of nights ago. He's um, uh, got a wonderful uh, rugby uh, experience, having had uh, 14 caps at under 20 internationals and 42 caps at under 18 internationals in New Zealand. He's part of the Sebra alumni, which contains great names uh, from uh, the England um, um, organization um, which uh, uh, is Will Greenwood, uh, Will Carling and uh, Wavell Wakefield. So um, great pedigree on both sides in the coaching uh, squad as we wait for the players to return. And uh, look uh, as you're uh, watching this please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to uh, the uh, Rugby Pass channel and um, we'll uh, Look forward to seeing if we can beat um, the first day's uh, um, subscriptions and uh, likes that we had. Um, wonderful to see this uh, reaching the four corners of the rugby world in New Zealand and South Africa and UK um, to, uh, to make uh, this and obviously Europe to make this uh, an interesting game to watch. With over, we had over one million engagements in uh, on the first day of uh, rugby. Some great uh, viewing ships. I think the the videos were viewed 10.6 million times. Looks like the wind is picking up, which will cause some challenges for the players. Several will have the advantage in the second half with the wind. I can imagine them using that extensively. So Sebra returns to the field, led by Finn Baker takes his uh, side out to the field. Looks like there's been lots of subs made. We've got Harry Johnson at 20. We've got uh, Archie Evans at 16. And RTA now takes the field. Looks like they've made a sub. I don't know his name, I'm sorry. He hasn't got a number on his shirt. And we haven't got a name for number 25 for I to RTA, so I'm sorry we can't uh, give you that name. And number 23, uh, I do know, because he's part of the Odyssey squad. His name... Is, is Louis uh, Malai uh, from uh, Ipswich School. So he'll know some of these Sebra players. So David Mern starts proceedings in the second half. Ball doesn't go five, however, it's picked up by James and uh, taken into touch. 
So I expect that Archer will be happy with that result. So number six is uh, Jacques van der Merve. He's going to put the ball in. It's like a quick line out. Number seven jumps, who's uh, Jane de Cess, de, Cess, de Jesus. Big powering run, using the fours to break a hole in the separate defence. And he snaffled it, he was over, he jackled it well. And now it's uh, RTA's cleared out well. Home, uh, sorry, it's now uh, Finn Baker who's on. That's number nine. In and a penalty to Sebra. Didn't quite get the uh, referee's hand signal for that. I think it was a high tackle. So Alec Martin puts it down to just around the 22 mark, just five metres in on the 22. Sebra start their attack against RTA as the uh, RTA uh, bench looks uh, to see what's happening, working their plans. Six man line out called. James takes it up. Big drive forward. I think that was quick cycling by Sebra. Goes wide. Ball, crash ball through, covered well by RTA. Wooten looks to recycle. Going wide. Sebra again plays another phase on the group. However, the referee has got a penalty for. I can't see his hand signal. <laughs> Sorry. I think it was holding on for the ball in the ta tackle. So, RTA reprieved. And they look to clear their lines. It's not successful, that wind causing some problems. So, from the back. Great kick if it goes. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. Great initiative. Intent was there. Wind took uh, took it away. So the ref calls a scrum on the halfway line. Sebra going for the 50-22. So, first scrum of the second half. Chad Hoffer feels good scrum by RTA as, he, as they go off to the right. Chad Hoffer kicks through. Collected by uh, Luke Parry. Good clearance. Luke Parry still on the ball. The referee watching proceedings closely. Well retained by RTA. It's uh, 25 powers through. Sebra over again. However, RTA retained the ball. Driven forward using the forwards to punch a hole. And the referee. Calls a penalty for offside, Sebra. Detroit with the ball looking to most probably put it into the corner for a, a, a line out as near as Sebra's line as possible. Good kick. It's about, uh, about five metres inside uh, Sebra's 22. Jacques van der Meer looks to uh, stop seedings of an RTA attack against Sebra. They call a four-man line out. It's gone, gone over the top, collected by Sebra, tapped back. Now the back line have it. Spun wide to the winger. Luke Parry 
drives it forward, taken into contact. RTA defending well. Penalty advantage Zebra for not rolling away by the looks of things. And uh, Wooten starts to put the pressure on. 22 is Josh Harbour. He goes over for a second try. Sorry, a third try for Zebra. And they extend their lead to 17 10 with conversion to come. Oh, no, we've been called back. Apparently the ball went forward in the pass. So it's a scrum to RTA. Score remains at 12-10 to Sebra. So Will Wooden having a discussion with the referee. Yes, it's hot out there. And whilst that was a try, the ball had gone forward to Josh Harbour. So, Chad Hoffmeyer. Let's put the ball in and Enable hopefully RTA to clear its lines out of the 22. Ball's going to have to bounce though because it's taken back in. They're running it out. Oh, it's intercepted. Great covering tackle by RTA. Sebra still with the ball. Knocked forward by Sebra, scrum. Great uh, defence by RTA, causing the knock on by Sebba. So RTA under pressure in the red zone, five metres out from their try line, looking to put a strong scrum in so that uh, RTA can clear the lines. Although it does look like they're going to run it. Big scrum by Sebra puts the pressure on. It's picked up. And driven forward by RTA, still retaining the ball successfully. Pass back by Hofmeyer. Detroit looks to clear the lines. Does so successfully. James and Detroit having a little discussion. So, what are Sebbers going to do from here? RTA just uh, waiting for. can't catch his number. to do up his laces. So, six man line out. So. Wynn taking the ball on to RTA side who collect it and make a successful drive forward. Hofmeyer clears to Detroit who puts a big boot in. Again, doesn't reach touch. Well collected by Billy Burkett on the wing there. Again, Seba looking to recycle. RTA disrupting. And the ball is taken into touch by Sebba. So it's a throw in for RTA. So uh, RTA playing a good disrupting game, causing mistakes by Sebra. Jacques de Burg waits for the call. Good contest in the air, Jaden Jesus wins it.
recycled. There's uh, Louis Mayall driving hard. Ball spread wide, chipped forward and chipped out. So, good phase of play takes uh, RTA into Seba's half. About five minutes left in this uh, first session of the second half. Several of the slim lead, taken well by James, but how a referee calls not straight. Some subs coming on. So number 13 is on, who... It's Lazen van Wagner. Makes sense. And some Odyssey uh, joining the backs. So, Detroit starts his uh, backline move. Chipped on. Covered by Harvey Johnson, who looks to bust out. Great tackle by RTA. Lots of congratulations. They're happy about that one. And that was uh, David Van Der putting in that uh, s tackle to create a line out. 10 metres uh, short of the Sebba 22. Goes over again, however, referee's not happy with, uh, referee Arif's not happy with the throw in, needs the spacing. Ball goes up, good contest, well won by Jaden to Jesus. Powered forward again by Mail. they're using him to try and bust the Sebra line, recycled by Hoffmeyer, who again, good ball retention. Great jackling by uh, Jacob Butterhill, who gets the wins the ball back and he's still driving forward for Sebra. Sebra now, Wooten looking to, uh, referee's got his hand out for not uh, rolling away. and uh, calls the penalty. And Alec Martin looks to punch it down. To uh, around about five meters short of uh, the RTA 22. So Sebba starts its attack on the RTA try line. Piedri, come at 45 off, Piedri. Piedri, net 45. Looking to do a uh, seven man line out. James taking cleanly. The mall starts. And they've got a rumble on. RTA looking to defend it, slowing it down, it's still moving forward. James is calling that he's been picked up. RTA still going forward. Referee's got his arm out for a penalty in Sebba's favour. Still moving forward, a great uh, maul. Are they going to get to the try line? And the referee holds proceedings. Same, bringing them all stand down. Wall, boys, oh, sorry, wall. going in from the side. So, kick down to the five metre mark. Seba looking to launch an attack on the try line from just five metres out. Oh, sorry, it's not quite five minutes, about ten metres out. Again, going for a full line out, which would suggest a maul. And uh, Finn Baker looking to take the line. He does so. 
Sebra set and start them all in procedures again. Still moving forward, goes down now. Pick and go, and it's successfully, it's that man Kane James again, powerful runner, breaks off from the breakdown, heads for the back line, difficult man to hold him up. So Zebra takes a 17 to 10 lead with the conversion to come. And I think that'll be a, a water break at this stage after the conversion. <laughs> Zebra starting to control this game. Kane James there, successful uh, try scorer. So is, I think that's Finn White. Finn White uh, to attempt the conversion. Successfully does it. Takes the score. Is, uh, as the coach is uh, needs a needs a need, I think I need some whiskey actually already. <laughs> So what's the score now? 17-10, is it? He got the conversion, yeah. I can talk about their making I can mic So referee calls time for the water break. Substitutions have been made. Uh, I know that there's some Odyssey players on for RTA. There's uh, Roebuck at number five. I recognize that. There's uh, Savita at uh, number 11 for um, RTA, Odyssey player. Louis Mayle still remains on. Let's go, Louis. Let's go, Louis. Ask 15, come on. So Dave Vanamur starts proceedings for this last session of uh, this match. RTA putting up a great fight against Sebba, but Sebba looking to take control in that third session. Ball goes out. RTA really coming up quickly, putting the pressure on Sebba. As Sebba's uh, Charlie Turnbull takes in to create the uh, ball going out wide now. They release the winger. Whoa! That was a high tackle. 
Some more handbags. So the referee is having a discussion with the touch. He's going to call So a yellow card for Fafa Kalos. So he's off for six minutes. He'll be back on. Zebra look to run it. Going out wide. Good hands all the way through. Flung down in the tackle. Zebra looking to power through. That, that's Finn White driving forward. 21 is Ben Redshaw breaking uh, through and setting up for the next phase. 18, Jacob Butthill offloads. Again, Sebra starting to control proceedings. Good, good jackal by RTA. Wins the ball back. Louis Mayle doing his stuff. Set a platform. And that's Louis Rayner, who's uh, also an Aussie player at number nine. Causing some disruptions for Sebba. Actually, Louis Mayle, uh, Louis Rayner is an old Sebba boy and Dubai Hurricanes boy. Learned his rugby in uh, Dubai. Went to Sebra for uh, to finish it off in a famous rugby school. So knock on. Sebra put in Will Wooten, England uh, under 18 player. Sebra warming up its players. That's Will Black Blackshaw, who's the uh, number 11 there. Charlie Turnbull's gone to number eight as uh, Jacob Butthill takes on the flanking duties. Big scrum. Wooden does well to retain, however. Great jackling, slows the ball down. Butthill spreads it wide. Oh, he's put him into the gap and a great covering tackle by Mayo again. Now uh, that's gone to number 22. Josh Harbour puts it over comfortably into the uh, corner. Sebra extends its lead to now 24 10 with the conversion to come. Taking advantage of the one man yellow card uh, for RTA. Looks like it went forward a bit in the referee has called the try. That certainly did go forward. So Finn White looking to successfully convert this. Long way uh, out, but he's got the win with him. It's how does he use that with his kick? Let's see. Set the flag flying in the background there. It's looking a great attempt. And it's a successful one. What a wonderful kick from that young man. Tremendous. So score now 26-10 in favour of Sebba.
Coach Simon Mayall. Uh, Noxie, as he's affectionately known. Go, go, go. Knocked on by Seba. So, ball now in under control of RTA. Louis Rayner looks to release the back line. Power drive by RTA with their big forwards. And again, great jackling by uh, Seba. However, the referee's blown up. Knocked on by Seba at the uh, line out, um, at the kickoff. So we go back. RTA, good attacking opportunity. Five metres out from the uh, Seba 22. What are they going to do? They're going to release the Odyssey Fijians. On the wing there. Louis Rayner to put in. Playing against his old uh, school. So Detroit calling the calling the call number ten. It's had a wonderful uh, tournament so far. Done some great kicking. Rainer feeds. Good good scrum by uh, Detroit. Puts it wide. About to release the lease there. Here he goes. Powerful run hour covered in touch. Seba losing the uh, 16th man the touchline very effectively. Seba to put the ball in. Johnny Hansen as James calls the proceedings. Slapped down, covered up by Finn White, who takes it forward. Big driving run, takes it out of the 22, pop pass to number 20, Harvey Johnson. Nice breakout by Sebba. Again, the, the wind causing havoc on the passing. So, RTA throw in. Well collected by Hayden to Jesus. RTA now tries to punch a hole in the gap. Sebra's over it quickly. It's a penalty advantage to RTA for not rolling away in the tackle. They start to spread it wide. Louis Mayle takes it in. Quick ball release. Rayner spins it wide. This is number 13. Stepping inside Lester Wagner. So, penalty to RTA. How are they going to respond? Looking to put it into the corner. Unsuccessful. Picked up by Wilbur Blockham. Takes it into contact to reset. Wooden snipes caught successfully by the RTA. Uh, Back row there, feeds it out wide. Big forcing run by Kane James to take it up to the 22. Again, look to clear. Kick down the middle, something of a nothing kick. As uh, Van der Meer looks to launch an attack. Tackled well, resets. Zebra powering their way through off the ball, and causing a bit of havoc. It's now a penalty, advantage to RTA. Spreads it wide. Here we go, oh, he's knocked it forward. Never mind, it's an advantage still to RTA. For, not quite sure. Might have been going off his feet. So, Coach Olivella. Making the goals, that ball is held up in the wind. You wouldn't have seen that, but it was held up in the wind. It 
It was aiming for about 10 metres beyond that 22, but the wind just held it up. So Jane De Jesus looks to throw the ball in on a short line out of uh, four players each side. Taken short. I don't think uh, Archie liked uh, the chap bundled into touch. <laughs> Referee uh, Arif just having a chat to the uh, players. yellow card there by the looks of things can't see the player's number so penalty Sebba so RTA down to 14 players and the wind is used beautifully by Finn White to take it to the RTA 22. So from 22 to 22, tremendous kick by Sebba as they now look to launch an attack on, RTA, on RTA's try line with an advantage in uh, the back line for Sebba with the yellow card. How are they going to use it? Number four. Tommy Triggs collects Sebra. Step inside. That's Luke Parry causing a disruption in the defence of uh, RTA. It's number 17, Finn White pushing through. Great uh, attempt to jackal the ball. Still going wide. However, it's uh, gone a bit forward. It's uh, knocked on. So, uh, well done, RTA. Great defence. And now they look to clear their lines with a scrum, strong scrum. So that's about time. 60 minutes have gone up. Is the ref is this going to be the last play of the game? <laughs> Louis Rayner puts the ball in. Big scrum from uh, Sebra causing pressure. Louis deals with it well. Managed to get the ball out. However, the wind has pushed it back. Kick it out. So here we go. This is an Odyssey player, Lise. Forcing uh, a run out, keeping the ball alive. Louis Rayner. Feeds out. Kick it out, kick it out. RTA looking to kick run it, it from the back line. Great, uh, great attitude, great defence. However, Sebra over it, great jackal. Play's being called back for a penalty to RTA. For a high tackle, I think that was. Yeah, high tackle. And that's time. So RTA started strong and put up a great resistance. However, Sebra took control of the game pretty much in the second uh, session of the game and uh, comes out on top, 26 points to 10. So that's uh, Sebra march on in the Shield competition. And RTA now to play the Odyssey 15. I've got the Odyssey. I didn't write the team down. Oh, I thought you knew the players. Yeah. 
I do, but uh, This competition, lovely sight with all the teams uh, who've just played, Sebba and Arce coming together and uh, thanking each other to play. What a wonderful sight that is, coaches in there as well. And uh, that's what rugby's all about. Whilst the match was played with uh, tremendous enthusiasm for both sides and uh, a little bit of handbags at dawn on occasions, they come together afterwards and enjoy uh, the friendship off the field that uh, the match played happened. So we move on to the next game, which is Odyssey 15 against RTA. There were some words about the Odyssey 15. Um, it's a true barbarian side. The players play... Uh, just wear the Odyssey shirt, but play in their club shorts or school shorts and uh, socks. Um, and the, the squad actually came together um, on Monday, had its first run out, and then played uh, RTA in its first game uh, and was uh, sadly beaten. Uh, great game, but RTA just uh, took control of it and won that. Um, and. Uh, now they face each other in the open, and the open is uh, a comb. So let's go through the players. We've got N Nico Matawai at uh, prop, Louis Mayol at. Uh, sorry, this is uh, the, the wrong thing. We've got uh, Nico at one, Aidan Craggs is at two, Elroy at three, Michael Broderick at four, Jake Register at five, Jason Collins at six from New Zealand, and Freddie Robson. Um, at seven and Joe Gutteridge at eight and then at uh, nine we've got Will Holmes, Ponani at uh, ten, Mafati at eleven, Jaden Lyons, uh, Millfield Boy at twelve, um, Elise T Tanivula at uh, thirteen, Azira or Eddie as he's affectionately known at fourteen and from Malaysia we have Al Malik at fifteen. And for the Rugby Academy, Ethan Maritz uh, at one, Stefflin van der Heever at uh, two, Christopher van H uh, Verun at three, Pedri van Herden at four, Francois Murray at five, Jacques de Merve at uh, six, Jaden de Jesus at seven, Daniel Mentes at eight, Chad Hofmeyer at nine, Duan de Toit at ten, Giovanno Hendricks at uh, eleven, to Andre Rennick at 12 and Lishan Wagner at 13 and Francois Kalitz at 14 and at 15. Uh, their kicker and a wonderful fullback, David van der Merve, will start proceedings. And again, just to remind everybody, uh, we're playing rolling subs, so uh, everybody gets an opportunity to play. So uh, coach Len Oliver um, and uh, we'll, we'll sort out his team as they recycle to start the game and then uh, um, the Ola, um, Odyssey is coached by Vessels de Plessis from the Bulls, um, along with uh, Mark Mapletoft, the England under-18 coach. And the referee today is Rainer van Tonder from South Africa. 
Um, we'll start proceedings. We'll just have a slight pause as the players from RTA gasp and uh, recover from the Sebra game. So we're running about five minutes behind time at the moment. Do we know the, Do we know how many people are watching? Tom. How much? Eight hundred. Oh. So, uh, just for those that are watching, please uh, give us a like and um, register to the Rugby Pass YouTube channel where you'll keep your information up about what's happening over today and uh, on Saturday where we go into the finals day. This is obviously the semi-finals day for the cup and the plate. And just to talk about the Open Trophy, this is the best of three games uh, between Odyssey and R rugby, rugby Travel Academy. Uh, unfortunately, there was one team uh, that couldn't turn up, otherwise we'd have a round-robin league. Um, so, we wait for the players to come out. And we'll have our first hacker of the day courtesy of Odyssey 15. Great to see mums and dads over supporting their uh, sons. So the referee Calls time. Ask the players to come out. Sorry, what was the referee? His name. So, Rainer von Turner awaits the players to come on. So Elroy leads the Odyssey 15 out. And the RTA take the pitch for the second time this morning and await the hacker from Odyssey. <laughs> Referee Rayner takes to the pitch. I got his name wrong uh, on the first day. I do apologise to his mother who called us. And Aidan Cragg leads the uh, hacker. A lot of emotion here. And RTA accept the challenge by moving from their 10 metre line to the halfway line to meet it. 
So, all to play for. Odyssey need to win this to win the Open Trophy. Oh, to, to, to keep in the Open Trophy. Whilst uh, RTA need to win this game to uh, win the trophy. So, would help we have a, had a ball to start with. Boys! And it's number 13 to kick off. Uh, Let's have Wagner start proceedings. Referee Rayner just waiting. Uh, Checking with Odyssey, everybody ready? Off we go. Somebody a little. So Guttridge takes it forward, making great ground. Holmes looks to uh, pass it out. Craggs takes it in. Holmes again recycles. Ponya picks it up. Great hands, keeping it alive, RTA, putting the pressure on in defence, still moving forward. Elise Tanavula takes it forward, RTA, straggling defence, holding it up, looks like they've won the ball back, congratulations to them. Odyssey, now on the defence, as RTA looks to penetrate through. That's number five, Francois Marquez, taking it into contact. Collected by Amalek, who kicks it forward, nice into touch. For an RTA throw in. And that's gonna be number two. Stefan de Hever to throw it in. Calls for a four man line out. It's a five man line out. Odyssey tried to disrupt. Number nine, Chad Hoffmeyer throws it out. Penalty to Odyssey, who looked to take it quickly. Good Barbarian running rugby. Spins it out wide. Makes, lays it back quickly. Holmes recycles. And Malik sticks in, now it's Holmes again. Odyssey looking to move the ball, kick through, however. Ball is out. Still being kicked through. Now Odyssey on the run. Mafati looks to clear the lines. Great pressure by uh, RTA. And it's a penalty for holding on to the ball in the tackle. And uh, number four, Pedre van Herden looks uh, to be in a bit of problem, as does an RTA player. which is number 13, Elisa Tanavula. So RTA going for the posts. So they're the players that were playing for the RTA uh, against uh, Sebba. Louis May all there. Harry Rigdon. So, Hendricks, Jevon Hendricks looks to, uh, sorry, Leisha Wagner looks to um, players that uh, looks like Jake Register coming off.
Unsuccessful, pushed the ball wide to the, to the right just by a foot or so. So the score remains nil all as uh, RTA line up to receive a 22 dropout. Now it's dropped out. Tackled by uh, Odyssey. Taken uh, quickly by Odyssey on a knock-on to retain possession as Odyssey looked to start its attack. Home spins it out. Driving forward. Quick recycle. Chip through. And that came off a uh, RTA hand to make it a scrum five for Odyssey. Exciting play from uh, Tinavula. Oh, he's gone for a dropout. Sorry, I thought that was... So, Guttridge looks to come forward, tackled. Still moving forward, L offloaded by Elroy. Holmes looks to recycle. Offloaded in the tackle. Arte putting up a stiff defence. Elroy feeds it out. Lovely offload. High tackle there. Just a replay of the thing, and um, as I say, looked like it came off an RTA hand. As we get back to play, we've got uh, attacking the line. Here come Odyssey, number 26. Referee uh, not playing, uh, sorry, the advantage uh, not going very far, so referee Raider calls uh, a penalty for coming in from the side. And uh, we're going to go for the posts. Captain Elroy calls for a kicking tee. As uh, Pony, uh, who's playing number 10, his shirt's number 19, uh, but Pony, Pony Nini Nakagavilu looks to line up the posts. About a metre out from the 22, kicking into the wind. Might need somebody to hold that ball up or is he going to run out of time as Rayner checks his watch. Ball held up. It's successful. Odyssey lead. Three points to nil. That's around eight minutes.
So RTA restart. Picked up. Ponai makes a break away, he goes. Oh, that's lovely play. Lovely stepping, looking for some support. There it is. Oh, wowza. Oh, what a try. Beautiful barbarian try. What classic rugby that is. Great from the Fijian contingent. Great running, great offloading. And that uh, was finished off by uh, Alec Malik from Malaysia. Oh, I beg your pardon. No, I think that was affectionately known as Eddie. He's uh, from Fiji, from the, the academy there. All these 18-year-olds are looking uh, to put on a great display of rugby. Azira Komaniasora from Fiji scored the try. So good height, but the wind's going to grab that. Distance uh, just short, direction was great. So, Odyssey lead, eight points to nil against the RTA at the 10 minute stage. That was Alec Malik looking to uh, convert the kick, uh, convert the try. RTA restart. Nice high kick. Who's under it? Knocked forward. RTA retaining possession, looking to set their attack. Stripped and uh, tackled by uh, Tanavu Tanavula, however, knocked on in that tackle. So it's a scrum down RTA. Mr. Collins, Albert Collins on the right, and Clayton Marak, who's uh, looking after the Fijian boys who've flown over all the way from Fiji. First scrum of the game. RTA's a bit warmed up. Let's see how this goes. All kept well. Big scrum. Referee Reina asks for a reset. Big push by uh, Odyssey on that one. I think the 9 and 10 have swapped on uh, RTA, so it's uh, Detroit putting the ball in. Having a chat to Will, Will Holmes from Sebba, who uh, Started the first half with Sebra and started the first half with this. Very conscious of player welfare timings. Holmes putting the pressure on, however. RTA not being able to cope with the, the scrum of uh, Odyssey. Aidan Craggs congratulating the uh, Nico and El Roy on that uh, push. There we go. Thank you, boys. <laughs> Again, the wind holding the ball up takes it just uh, about uh, two meters inside uh, the RTA half. Vessel de Plessis working hard with the uh, Odyssey fours this morning and getting their line outs sorted out. So let's see how this goes with the Odyssey's first line out. Aidan Craggs to throw the ball in. Looks pretty good to me. Off they go. 
as his gutter is powering himself through. Sets the ball up nicely. Keep it going left. Elroy takes it forward again. Setting the ball up nicely. It's Nico taking it in. Again, good recycling by uh, Odyssey. Good offload, keeping the ball alive. Still taking the ball forward and it goes into touch. Oh no, it's not, it's still alive. And a penalty. Not sure what the... Oh, it's not a penalty, it's a scrum. to Odyssey. Mark Mapletoft of uh, under 18 uh, and under 20s uh, backs coach has been training this back line. We'll see uh, what magic they're going to produce here. Referee Rayner asks the scrum to be reset. So I think this, as we approach the 15 minutes, we're looking to have a water break after this phase of play. RTA keeping themselves stretched and supple after their match against Sebra. Free kick, pushing before the ball went in. Quick uh, ball. Here we go. This is Gutteridge. Takes it into tackle, sets it up. Quick recycle. Now they're starting to move the ball. Referee says knock on. So good defence by RTA, keeping uh, the defensive line going, forcing the knock on. And the referee calls a water break. So Odyssey leading eight points to nil at the uh, first water break of the first half. And... Uh, Odyssey go and join Vessel de Plessis and Mark Mapletoff to talk about uh, what they're going to do in the second session of this first half. Archer is split down into backs and forwards. Coaches asking their players to dig deep. Sebra yes. parents there talking about their uh, win today against RTA, no doubt. Vessel de Plessis, that's calling the plays. Now Mark Mapletoff will take over. Len Oliveira there, talking about uh, encouraging his players. So, referee Rayner calls time on the water break. There's been some substitutions made on the uh, Odyssey side. I'll get to, get to those.
So, scrum down. RTA ball following a knock on by uh, Odyssey in their attack. Time on, says referee Rayner. Great shot there. So, ball in. Oh, he's under pressure. Managed to clear the lines. Here we go. Great play. Oh, that's a wonderful run. That's a great try as well. Jaden Lyons takes it over for Odyssey. Class player from Sebba. Congratulations to Jaden. Takes the score on. Lovely hand off there. Powers over. Takes a RTA player for a walk across the uh, touchline. Try line. Lovely uh, show of the ball. Steps on the outside. Hands off again. That's class play, isn't it? Well done, Jaden. So, Ponyanai looking to convert the ball here. Again, kicking to win, difficult kick. Wind holds it up, right direction, but it's just too much wind to uh, allow that ball to get across the posts. So, Odyssey 13, RTA nil. 18 minutes gone. David von Merv with the ball, looking to restart proceedings. Kicks it nice and high. Clean take by Odyssey. That's uh, Ratu Makai Natoi Tazera takes it in, and of course they release the ball. Odyssey looking to run it as much as possible. Will Holmes feeds it out. This is Louis Mayo putting some pace onto the ball. And keeping it live, great little run. Holmes feeds it out. Missed pass bit home. Referee calls a knock on, I think. Oh, it's penalty offside taken quickly. Seeing a lot more chips through by Odyssey with the Fijians in the line now. Keeping the ball well, RTA. This is number 14, Fafkalex, looking to start an attack by RTA. Everybody's scrabbling for the ball. Referee says, no, that's enough. They've won it fairly again. Obviously, trying to disrupt the play. They kick it high. So this is Al Malik with the ball. Great covering tackle. Al Malik keeps it alive. Holmes takes it up. Again, keeping it alive. Protecting the ball. Who's there? Roebuck drops it, unfortunately. Gives the ball to RTA to uh, start attack in the red zone. They spin it out wide. This is number 21. Timothy... Yeah, Isaacs. Again, the, using the forwards to punch a hole. They go back to the security of the forwards. And the referee calls a penalty for going down off their feet. So, on the scene, um, sorry, RTA number four, Pedri uh, Van Hoon looking a. Pick up and drive from Ethan Maritz, working hard for RTA. Here come RTA. 
However, determined defence by Odyssey keeps them uh, still on the five metre red area. Now they're spinning the ball wide. Good step and uh, go by Yadavad Hendricks. Again, Odyssey penalised. Referee Rayner slows the game down. Thank you, Zebra parents. Nice to see you smiling. Mum's come to join as well. They're all on camera. It'd be great to focus on the play if we could. So. Referee Rayner. Something's happened off the ball. Referee Rayner's calling some play. Reading the riot attack. Thank you, referee. Let's uh, get back to normal, please. There we go. And he's called a penalty, and it's uh, Louis Mayles sets it running. Good barbarian rugby. Here we go. This is Guttridge making a, a break, but tackled hard, and the ball retained by RTA. Now, for not releasing, it's rolled away. He's not 10 metres, so he's playing on. Great drive by RTA, still with the ball, still holding on, looking to recycle. Great step and go by number six, Yaxta van Merv. Offside by number 19, I think the referee said. Oh, number 10. That's, that would be... So, RTA looking to take the ball from a line out. No doubt, Buffle. maul it up Buffle. to get it over the try line. They did that successfully against RTA, uh, against Odyssey yesterday. Are they going to do a repeat of it today? Five man line out. Line out taken. Missed the jumper. Brought down at the back. Like now, now they go, however, going to another player, causing a scrum. Jane Isaac's not happy about that play. So, Odyssey looking to clear their line from the Danish danger zone. Will home with the ball, calling seeing what's going to happen. Boys line up. Christa van Ver blows a, a kiss to the Odyssey uh, Nico. And they get the penalty. Back and face. Looking to spread it wide, put it out to the back line. Oh, little chip, here we go. Is he successful? Confusion all round there. I think uh, not successful. However, referee Rayner calls offside, so it's a scrum again. Uh, sorry, it's a penalty again to RTA. Rugby balls everywhere. So, Leighton Hopshire with the ball for RTA. And it looks like they're going to go for the five metre line. Yep. And do a catch and drive. All uh, seven players in by looks six. Here they go, quick ball taken. Odys Arte already with the push on. Penalty, playing the advantage. Everybody's a bit high there. So no further forward. Referee calls a 
close the proceedings as uh, Jake Register releases the ball from an RTA player. Referee Elroy, uh, uh, referee Rayner telling Captain Elroy his decision. And uh, I think that is a warning to say any more and it's all going to go back. So, repeat again. Um, Pedri. Out we go. Edge of tomorrow replay. Almost three minutes to the end of this uh, first half. Odyssey leading 13 Jok. points to nil. Jok. 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 Nicely taken. Ball gone, oh, a lovely little move by RTA. However, it's met by Odyssey. RTA looking to use their force drive for the arm is out again, playing advantage. Again, big force coming in. Shut forward, is he through? No, he's tackled. Referee still playing advantage to RTA. Big tackles going in. Spins it out wide. Here he comes. This is number 18. Jant up. Big tackle. However, long advantage played by the referee and in its uh, penalty to RTA. Referee's going to have a chat again. This is uh, Joe Guttridge being called forward. RTA players rightly having a rest. Big tackle there by uh, Azira Kamanasaro from uh, Fiji on uh, Dune Detroit. Well, he looks like he's in a bit of pain. Sadly, he's going to be going off. The idea was that uh, Archie would play one half against Sebra and Odyssey against uh, the other half. However, Archie wanted to play the whole game and use some reserves from Odyssey to help them through. So, uh, players are obviously now feeling it. So, scrum, RTA, still in uh, Odyssey's 22. This is uh, number six, Jacques van der Merve being uh, looked after by the paramedics. Shows the quality of the play. We haven't had uh, many serious injuries over the last uh, one and a half days of rugby. Coach has done a tremendous job conditioning the players. So I'd imagine this will be the last uh, phase of this half before the players go in for a welcomed break. Hardberg, Ethan. 
JJ. Not sure what's going on here. <laughs> so, Eddie Azira, the Odyssey uh, wing, decides to go flanker. I think uh, we've got a yellow card on Odyssey's side. So Odyssey down to 13 players. Uh, sorry, 14 players. Referee's still not happy with the scrum. Ball recycled quickly. Goes out. Oh, what a lovely line. And they score. Oh. Well, it looks like a try. It is a try. Well done. That uh, Fafa Colette's running a great line. Great move by uh, RTA to put some their first score on the board just before half time. There it is. Great, uh, great line. Almost tackled by Roebuck. Held up, but he looks like he got across the line. There we go. Francoise Kalitz, congratulations on that score for the Rugby Travel Academy. And uh, unfortunately, conversion, I think, was incomplete. So it's 13-5. In favour of Odyssey in this open trophy round robin match. As half time is called. Oh, 
So, players uh, being called out again by referee Rayner. We'll take the field after this. We've got uh, the other Shield semi-final. This should be an exciting game. St. Michael's versus Trinity. So, Odyssey take to the field with some uh, replacements being made to ensure the players are kept uh, fresh for Saturday. I can see Louis, Louis Rayner at 24 is on. Um, Ponai still is on. Louis Rayner replacing uh, Will Holmes. And Ponai uh, to start the second half. Odyssey leading 13 points to five. Taken well by RTA. Odyssey up quickly. Off their feet. Penalty to RTA. Take it quickly. Detroit leads it out, spinning it out to the wing. Well tackled. Keeping the ball alive, little chip through. Going over on the top. So Louis Rayner looks to set the scenes quickly. So that was Nico taking it forward and driving it forward. Offloads in the tackle. Ball kept alive. Cleared out nicely. Rayner looking to push it off to the left. Jaden Lyons. Oh, puts it in. Here comes. Taking it over. A great offload in the tackle from Odyssey allows them to keep the ball alive 
and go for their third try, taking the score up to 18 points to five. Successful try scorer. Eighteen points to five with conversion to come. Great pass by Michael Broderick there. Uh, uh, sorry, Jake Register to put uh, Ponai in. Al Malek to see if he can do the honours. Conversion unsuccessful. Score remains at 18-5 in favour of Odyssey. Three tries to one. And Mervs restarts. Ball taken by Elroy. Drives it forward. Oh, he's broken the line. Oh, ball went forward in the tackle. Picked up by RTA, keeping it alive. And it's a penalty to RTA for not releasing in the tackle. And Detroit, guys, the screen's frozen. Detroit, Detroit uh, looks to put it down field to get into the uh, Odyssey 22. And he successfully does that. Just on the 22 of uh, Odyssey's 22. So... Can RTA launch a successful attack from here? Going for a five-man line-out. So they've uh, got some forwards there that they're going to use to punch through, no doubt. Jake Register comes back on from his yellow card. Nicely taken. And here's the, here's the ball. Stood up well by Odyssey. So, now they go to the back line. Lovely little inside pass. Big tackle, however, from uh, Odyssey. Driving them back over, out of the 22. Knocked on. Louis Rayner offloads. Here's Jaden Lyons looking to put some pace on the ball. Unfortunately, Mafati un oh. overruns the pass. Ball goes out in favour of an RTA throw-in. And this is going to be thrown in by Stefan Van Hever. <laughs> Referee saying, right, let's call a mark. Quick line-out. Says, no, he's not happy with that. Asking the boys to listen to him. Uh, and so he's going to go for a scrum and uh, it's an odyssey ball I think it's not straight so Louis Rayner to put the ball in for odyssey about five metres in on their uh, half and it goes. Go, go, Good go. scrum. Picked up by Register. Lions feeds it out to Ponai. Puts it into. Here comes. Oh, unlucky. Intent was good. Passing uh, not uh, accurate. Causing the knock on. Scrum down. RTA ball. So the ball did go out. So the referee asked if it was. Uh, Line out there prefer or a scrum. And uh, Jaden de Jesus asks for a scrum. So number 20, Leighton Hopshire, 
Looking to put the ball in for RTA. Big scrum. And a big scrum by uh, Odyssey puts uh, the RTA front row under pressure. And they win the penalty. Are they going to do by Ben Rugby? No, they're going to kick for the corner. Pony with the ball. Puts it about uh, literally halfway Damien. down the 22 Damien. of uh, RTA. And uh, Aidan Craggs to uh, throw the ball in for Odyssey. And Tommy, Tommy Rumney's joined the uh, forwards. Uh, he's a local lad playing. Simple little throw in. Allows the uh, ball, but it's a free kick. Knocked forward, picked up. So Ponai throws the ball down in frustration of not being able to score a second try. So it's a scrum down, policy ball, I think for a knock on in the tackle. Uh, by uh, RTA. Uh, uh, so Odyssey right on the 22 of uh, RTA. Looking to launch an attack. They do so. Jake Joe Guttridge picks up. Simple ball. This is Mafati taken into touch. Disrupted by RTA, not forward by RTA. Referee calling a knock on by Odyssey in the line out. Substitutions being made. So this is number 18 coming on. Janta, number five coming on for RTA who is uh, Francois Maddis. Odyssey changing its scrum with uh, Tommy Rumney going to number eight and Joe Guttridge going to flanker, open side flanker. Ball in for RTA, again a big scrum by uh, well recovered. Pressure on RTA though. And the referees uh, call a scrum back. Advantage to RTA and um, to Odyssey. We're now going to move an attack. Backs figuring out what they're going to do. Calls being made by Pony. Louis Rayner has his instructions with uh, Joe Guttridge going back to number eight. Isn't going to pick up, does a dummy run, draws some players off, Pony looks to step inside, 
take it on himself. Reina protecting the ball again, a pick and go by Collins. Good rackling. The look, the recycle. Jaden Lyons looking to go in. Oh, a lovely offload. Oh, he's dropped the ball. Oh, what a shame. That was Jaden Lyons. What a shame. That would have been a lovely, lovely move. Never mind. Boys putting on a great show here. RTA particularly having played two games in a row. So, scrum down on RTA's five metre line. It's going to be another powerful scrum from Odyssey. Jake Collins now at number eight. Rumney uh, gone on the blind side, while Guthrie is on the open side looking to put pressure on the kicker. Again, a big scrum again. And they get the penalty. Oh my lord, it's a quick taken quickly by Collins. No, the referee's called him back. Brings him back to the mark where he wants it. Rene Reina takes control. They look to put it forward. Oh, he spreading it out wide again. Some tired players out there. Knocked forward, didn't quite work, so uh, we'll start where we left off, scrum to RTA on this side. There's the Odyssey players having a great time, wonderful team spirit. Players only came together this week. So RTA put in. Leighton Hopshire does the honours, looking to spread it wide, Detroit kicks out, or leaves the pressure, great kick. So picked up by Malik, Lice rip, RTA retained the ball going in, driving it upfield, big jackal by uh, Odyssey. Good ball protection by RCA. Detroit looks to release the little chip through. Covered. Attempted cover by number 19. And then bowled into touch. Now we're taking the first knock on in the tackle. Time off as uh, substitutions uh, and a water break is hold.
Ik heb je al gedraaid. Kom laatste tien minuten, tien minuten mannen, kom ons bij vast. Jij jij groot kram, jij lekt. We look to resume the final session of this game. Is the scrum down to uh, Odyssey or is it a scrum down to RTA? It's a scrum down to RTA from a knock on by Odyssey. Some changes by uh, Odyssey. We've got uh, Louis Mayo back on as a uh, hooker. We've got um, also Tavita Wakata, open side flanker. And uh, Harry Rigdon at 10. So RTA looking to spread it quickly. That ball went forward. And it's picked up nicely by Rayner for a scrum down. About uh, five meters in from the halfway line. Louis Mayo sets the position for the Odyssey scrum. Scrum cap, loop switch uh, school. Louis Rayner puts the ball in. Big scrum again. Guthrie takes it quickly. Looking to make it fast flowing rugby. Going over, well rucked back. However, not 10 metres, so referee calls it down. Harry Rigdon calls for the ball, looks to put it on there. It's near to the five metre, however, it's about 10 metres in on the 22 of uh, RTA. Eighteen five to Odyssey as we go into this uh, final session of the second half. JJ, be JJ, be Louis Mayo waits for the ball. JJ, What's Odyssey going forward, to do JJ, from JJ, here? Short line out. Didn't go five meters. Oh, it's not forward. Always enterprising to see uh, Ford's trying to do uh, back moves from a line out. So RTA to put in, in their 22, would look to clear the ball. Referee saying uh, it's a penalty for boring him. So RTA can uh, regroup as their number nine. Chad Hoffmeyer looks to. Uh, what's that, Detroit? I think that might be Detroit, actually. Swap shirts. Good clearance kick takes them to the, about the 10 meter line in their half against this uh, brisk wind as you can see the uh, 
Lines of his flag there is uh, there's a stiff breeze, five to ten knots, Football. going from left to right. Football. So, number three, Christoph Van Verve puts it in. Archer spins it wide, Demi runs. Now they've got a bit of an overlap. Are they going to use it? Nicely uh, got past, takes it into contact. Ball comes out, however, not rolling away because another penalty to RTA who take it quickly, using their powerhouse to get in and tackle. Good clear out, they're jackaling over. RTA looks to spin pass. It's a penalty for offside. Referee Rayner saying number 10 was offside. So Detroit looks to put it into the corner to start an attack. Good effort, gets it uh, about halfway into the 22. Everybody's happy. So lots of subs coming on for uh, Odyssey. Got Roebuck at 11. Elroy's coming off. Jake Register's off. Joe Guttridge is off. About everybody getting a chance to play. So, good defence by uh, Odyssey, causing a disruption in uh, RTA's mall. Oh, the referee's called a penalty and they've taken it quickly for the offside. Here they come. Here they come. He's there. Try under the posts. Congratulations to RTA. Odyssey sleeping, has been caught napping. Takes the score to 12 points to 18, so it's all to play for. There's your try scorer. Number 29, looking to restart proceedings, Harry Rigdon. Score tried, uh, try was scored by Daniel Murta. Your number eight for RTA. Ponini starts the game. Chips it through. Collected by RTA, spin it out wide. Picked up. And I think that's it. Yes, Odyssey win their first game. They're happy bears. <laughs> that's the side who came together on Sunday, had their first run out on Monday. And we now move on to an enthralling game, the second Shield quarter final, which is uh, between Trinity and St. Michael's. Oh, 
was stupid, man. What are you doing? Bring him onto the pitch, for God's sake. Just bring him onto the pitch. Just keep him where he is. And the boys will say hello to him. In Japan, number six. Walked him out to the pitch. Have we got team sheets? Throw that one away now. Are you sure it doesn't matter? So who am I looking here? Some These are all what? Those are players to watch. Okay, as we start this uh, second Shield semi-final, uh, Trinity versus St. Michael's, we've got uh, David Bampo at one, Oli Butler at two, Temi Asami at uh, three, Oli German at four, Teddy Wilkie at five, Asaya Opara at six, Fred Websell at seven, eight is uh, Roma Matavoli, nine is Drew Gormley, ten is Finn Kennedy, eleven Maxwell Farrell, 12, Zach Nixon, 13, Ollie Bailey, 14, Alex Tagg, and uh, 15, Connor Byrne. And players to watch is uh, Connor Byrne at 15, and uh, Trinity's number six, Asaya uh, Opara, and uh, number three, Temi Asami, all um, looking to come through. And on their bench, uh, Josh Bellamy. And now we're on St. Michael's. And here we've got Ben Howard at one, Tom Begarty at two. Uh, Dune Maguire at three, Fraser McKenna at four, John Magwin at five, Sam Karen at six, a player to watch. Seven is James White, eight is Billy O'Donoghue. Chris uh, O'Connor at nine, Wemble de Klerk at uh, 10. Patrick Word at 11. 12 is Mark Catterall, 13 is Jules Fenno, and 14 is Larry Kirkland, and 15 is David Deuce. And uh, look out for Tom Stewart coming on at 16. These are, so these are two sides that are uh, still smarting from their cup losses, so it should be an enticing game. So St Michael's in red and Trinity in blue. St. So Michael's with wind advantage and uh, referee Eamon Adeep from Malaysia about to start proceedings. And St. Michael's 10, Willem de Klerk, player to look out for, kicks off. The number's very difficult to read on. Uh, St. Michael's shirts. So collected by Larry Kirkham, who spins it out wide. Steps inside, what a lovely step. Oh, here we go. This is number 15 on the ball. David Lucy, great, great run. Finally brought down in the 22 thing. St. Michael's ready to spin it past. Out wide, little step inside by their winger, Larry Kirkham. Still driving forward. Trinity holding up proceedings. Just on, almost on their five metre, slowing the ball down. Again, big defence, but uh, St Michael still driving across the game line. Now in there. Number nine, Chris O'Connor goes, almost. And it's a penalty for not rolling away in the tackle. 
to St. Michael's. All to play for in this uh, second semi-final shield. So St. Michael's going to run it. Number seven, James White picks up and takes it in. Chris O'Connor hunting for the ball. But it looks like Trinity's putting up a big tackle and it's a try. <laughs> try time to St. Michael's. One minute, 46, minute, 46 seconds in. And the St. Michael's forwards powering over. And that was number six. Sam Corrigan doing the honours for St. Michael's. Little flip out. Big drive forward. Takes the number 10 of St. Michael's out. Great try. Well done, Sam. A lot of interest in this player over in Ireland. So, conversion to come. Again, St. Michael's playing with the wind. Conversion not successful, so remains at five. Jules Fenlon can convert. It's difficult kicking conditions. So, uh, prepares to receive the ball. Referee Eamon shows Trinity where to start. And uh, Trinity's Connor Byrne looks to restart. Again, nicely taken. Trinity on their 22. Chris O'Connor feeds back. Good defence by Trinity, making uh, life difficult. St. Michael's, they now swing it back. Little chip forward for the winger. Oh, he's taking the ball! What a fantastic, fantastic, oh, and a great tackle. Wonderful tackle. Great covering tackle by Connor Byrne. Uh, that was wonderful play. Great schoolboy rugby, this. Quality rugby. Look at that, chip over, takes it, and off he goes. And a classic tackle. Sets on the outside. Connor Byrne using the uh, 16th player, the touchline, to his advantage. So, Trinity throw in. Nice, taken quickly with a ball dabbed down. Puts us full. St. Michael's up quickly. Taken into contact. Chris O'Connor feeding the ball. Sorry. Drew Goomley feeding the ball. It's kicked forward. Knocked forward by uh, Wilhelm de Klerk. Gives the advantage to Trinity. Halfway between the halfway line and uh, St. Michael's 10 metres line. Good follow up by Trinity as well. So, Drew Gormley prepares to put in for Trinity. Good scrum. A lot of pressure on it. Referee's got his arm up for 
St. Michael's ball again. Ball goes out wide. Looking to spread it wide. Steps inside. Good tackle by St. Michael's. Great defence. Ref calls it back. No advantage. So, Trinity starting their uh, march towards St. Michael's try line. Penalty just around the 15 metre mark. Um, 10 metre mark. On the 5 metre in from the touchline. Little stab down. Linesman says that uh, takes uh, Trinity to two or three metres in to St Michael's 22. Dolly Butler going to throw the ball in. Trinity uh, calling a fire. Six man line out. Oh, he throws in. Oh, he. Not backwards, but quickly picked up by St. Michael's. Great play. Connor Gibbs. Out it goes to uh, Mark Cartwell making the uh, move forward. Knocked forward in the tackle, however. Trinity's defence really uh, standing up. Scrum down, Trinity ball. St. Michael's coach is there. Oh, what was that? So, Drew Gormley waiting to start proceedings again. Ball goes in. Good scrum by uh, Trinity, looks to feed the ball, looks a bit forward. Loops round, there's the gap. Referee taking the first knock on by the Trinity back line. So scrum down to St. Michael's. St. Michael's Chris O'Connor prepares to put the ball in on their 10 metre line. Good scrub, well held by St. Michael's. Connor feeds out. Patrick Clerk feeds it off. Kick through by Mark Contract. Has it gone too far? Yeah, it's gone too far. So we go all the way back for a scrum where the ball was kicked in favour of uh, Trinity. Coming up to the 10 minute mark with uh, St. Michael's 5-0, having scored a try in the first couple of minutes. So, Drew Gormley prepares to put in. Ball goes in, St. Michael's hold scrum, big scrum. Feeds it out to Finn Kennedy, who's moves the ball, quick ball out to the wing. This is uh, Aiden Trigg. Good recycling. So Michael's up quickly, putting some big tackles in. Trinity able to retain the ball. There's the overlap, and he's knocked it forward again. Pressure by St. Michael's, causing players to look at the oncoming tackler rather than uh, taking the ball. So well done, St. Michael's, for that. Been some wonderful rugby. So. 
Some interesting information between these two schools. They were actually founded a year apart. St Michael's founded in 1944 and Trinity in 1945. So Chris O'Connor looks for restart proceedings on the 22 of St Michael's. Good scrum by St Michael's holds it. Puts it out to with the clerk. Big kick downfield. This could go for the 50-22 if they're not careful. They're pretty relaxed about that. Looks the step. Good tackle. Good clear out. Charge down. Trinity now driving forward. Drew Gormley puts a box kick in, takes him to the 10 metre. Collected by Wilhelm de Klerk. St Michael's resets, puts it down. Flat pass by the prop. Not backwards, says the referee. And kicks. And then St Michael's reset. Good defence, arms out for advantage for St Michael's. He's playing uh, uh, her offside at uh, uh, Trinity offside. Advantage St Michael's. <laughs> offside, says referee Eamon, who's also from Malaysia. Lovely chap, had a good chat with him last night. Delighted to be able to have this opportunity to referee this uh, quality of rugby because in Malaysia it's mainly sevens that are played so to have an opportunity to referee 15s is, is most welcome for them. As uh, they kicked uh, just within a metre of uh, Trinity's 22 to start their attack. Big line out, nicely taken by St Michael's big number five, John McGowan, powering through. O'Connor re re clears nice offload to John McGowan, who takes it forward, breaking the game line now regularly, St Michael's against uh, Trinity. Again, laid back, they're up to the danger zone, five metre line of uh, Trinity. Trinity's defence causing uh, some big hits to go in. St Michael's still on the five metre line. Now over the game line. Again, another big hit. Still on the five metre line. Nice hands. Good clear out. And the referee blows up what wonderful defence by Trinity as uh, St Michael's holds on to the ball in the tackle. Drew Gormley wanting a bit of attention on the shoulder. Wilhelm de Klerk asking the referee what all went as mums and dads from St Michael's. Ladies wave, you're on TV. We're just above those lovely ladies, the mums of St Michael's, I think. So, referee calls a water break.
Okay, look to restart after the water break. Penalty to uh, Trinity. They look to clear their lines after holding on to the ball by St. Michael's. That's what they call a good nudge. Takes them up to just beyond their 10 metre line for a throw in. Trinity discuss their options as they come forward. St. Michael's already waiting for them. Referee asking uh, St. Michael's just to give a metre. So, Ollie Butler throws in. Good disruption by uh, St. Michael's, however, recovered. Big line pressure from St. Michael's causing Trinity to stall their uh, move. Now they've got it again. Looking to break the line. Great defence by St. Michael's. With Trinity's Drew Gormley looking to box kick, puts it up high. That's going to be pushed back, guaranteed. However, high tackle by St. Michael's gives them a penalty, takes some pressure away from them to be able to clear their lines in their 22. And it's number 15, Connor Byrne, who uh, puts a big nudge in. And uh, takes it up to the just a, a metre short of the 10 metre line. Linesman Rayner saying that's as far as you're going to go. You can see the power of the wind with his flag. And these players are, are certainly adapting their game this today. It was uh, a very strong on the first days of rugby. So St Michael's coaches have a think, have a ponder. How are they going to do this now? No, they're not the girl. I think they're players, actually. Good line out. Connor feeds. Big tackle. Connor takes the ball again. Picked up by Drew. Oh, here comes. Lovely kick forward. Unfortunately, it's gone out on the full. Good intent by Connor Byrne, but uh, unfortunately not successful. Well, I think it was Alex Trigg, actually. I beg your pardon. Numbers are difficult to read. Ball thrown in, not collected, Trinity mops up, in they drive, ball is out, fortunately, quick up. so quick off, quick line up, here's the gap, still moving forward, Connor recycles, quick throw in side, part, oh, a little back hand flip, look at that for quality, ball laid back nicely. Trinity retaining the ball well, looking to start their attack on the 22 of things. Mike, St. Michael looking to drift offside. There's the offload into the attack. This is Connor Byrne driving forward. Knock on, says referee. St. Michael's piling the pressure on to afford a a scrum just out, just on uh, inside the 22. There's the some St. Michael's bench. Asking to go and warm up. Water boys are on. Got a water break. So, uh, wants to play some other interesting. Facts about St. Michael's, they've a uh, bit of a factory of international. They've had 11 senior players, uh, uh, internationals uh, developed. They've had 24 under 20 Irish internationals and they've had 49 under 18 internationals. And uh, their alumni is uh, Max Deegan, Ryan Baird, Ronan Kelleher, 
and they've won uh, three Leinster titles, the last one being 2019. So a real powerhouse in uh, Irish rugby. So St Michael's put in, in their 22, looking to clear their lines, use the wind. Still only one try in it, so all to play for from both sides. Trinity looking to put a nudge on. St Michael holds firm. There's the clearance kick, successfully up to the uh, 10 metre line of uh, St Michael's, or just short of it. Waiting for the ball to come back. Referee lays out the lines. Keep asked for a metre apart. So throw in by Trinity. Up they go. Collected by Teddy Wilkie, I think. Good tackle. Now he's jackled over. That's going to be their ball if he's not careful. Good protection by Trinity. Long pass out. Spreading it wide. Steps inside. Still steps again. Still going strong. Good clear out by Trinity. We uh, knocked forward. So uh, Trinity uh, playing a risky game with these long passes in this wind. So the ball is starting to go behind the players, which makes it difficult for them to take it at pace. And St Michael's is coming up and uh, very quickly on the defensive line and putting some panic into uh, Trinity's backs. So about seven minutes left of the first half. Ball goes in from Drew Gormley. Releases his back line. Good step inside. He's broken through. Here he goes. This is Connor Byrne. Great try. Great try. Well played. We still have a player to watch out for, and he's living up to that. Well done, Connor. So exactly right, holding the ball on the outside, so if he's tackled, makes it difficult for the players to grab the ball. There's his step. So, can he successfully convert his own try? Let's see. Again, kicking into the wind, so it's a difficult one. No, just uh, to the right of the posts. So, five points all as we move into the last five minutes of this half. Wilhelm de Klerk restarts, kicks it long, taken in cleanly by uh, Trinity, charged down. If they're not careful, they're going to lose it. St. Michael's all, all over the ball and really putting the pressure on. Seem a lot more hungry than Trinity at the moment. O'Connor puts it out. Big tackles coming in from, from Trinity, making every effort to move away. The referee's got his arm out, however. 
St Michael's powering through across the game line. Referee says, sorry, no advantage. Let's come back. Hands in the ruck, naughty, naughty. So they have a quick discussion. They're going to go for the posts to hopefully create a three-point lead as they come to the end of the first half. So, here we go. Successfully completed. So, Michael's eight, Trinity five. Four minutes of the half left. Kick taken by Jules Fenlon. Nothing in it between these two sides. It's a fascinating game. Both putting up great defences, both with running capabilities in their back line and both having uh, strong packs to drive the ball forward. That didn't go 10, so they'll have a scrum on the halfway line. Always difficult to defend from. It's, uh, the attacking team can go either side, cause indecision for the defence. So, Chris O'Connor prepares to put in. What's St Michael's going to do? Loading the left hand side. Are they going to do that or are they going to go right with a peel off from the number, number eight? create the overlap so no they're going left oh that's been intercepted steps inside good tackle again holding on to the ball in the tackle so great effort by uh, Zach Nixon to intercept that ball and take it forward, but he was isolated a little bit as uh, the desperate defence of St Michael's does the necessary with uh, St Michael's number eight, Billy O'Donoghue, doing the necessary jackling to retain the ball. There's the half time. Hooter has almost played play his last defence, uh, last phase of the ball. Of, the, uh, of this half. Instructions delivered by uh, Dewan Maguire. Up it goes, nicely taken by Fraser McKennan. And they've broken it short. Breakout by uh, St. Michael's down the blind side. Fraser McKinnon puts the pressure on. Connor looks to recycle. Kicks it out. Everybody, time for a breather. Five minutes into the changing rooms for a quick discussion.
Stop watching her. So, half time over. Trinity deciding to stay out. Uh, St. Michael's takes to the field. I think there's been some subs. We've got uh, number 18, Regan Corgan, on. So, Trinity to restart. Referee counts up all the players. Yep, all correct. Off we go for the second half of this enthralling semi final, Shield semi final. Taken in by St. Michael's. I think that was uh, Rian Corgan who did that. Big kick down. Trying to take it up to its halfway line. Little clever box kick there, just hitting the 22, he calls the mark. That's Wilhelm de Klerk, reading the game well. Kicks it out, perhaps doesn't make as much ground as he had hoped. <coughs> takes it up to the St. Michael's 10 metre line. St. Michael's uh, being asked to give give for ground, not really listening. Well taken. Good line out, Trinity with the ball. Again, Connor Byrne busting through. Oh, 
Connor recycles. Trinity getting into the, into a good rhythm from the start. Pops the ball out. However, penalty. Coming off uh, off the off their feet. So Wilhelm de Klerk looking to clear some lines. Big kick down. Again, the wind takes it. That was heading for the 22, but it's uh, gone about two meters beyond the 10 meter line. Subs being made. There was an ambitious cheer from the mums of St. Michael's. Hold on. Referee Eamon not happy with the line out. Now he says, let's get on with it. St. Michael looking to nicely done, takes it to their uh, Fraser McKennan. Nice little move in the back line, gets them across the game line. Chris O'Connor looks to recycle. Oh, he knocked on, collected by Trinity. Pop pass, now they're Kennedy box kicks and a big kick again but that's just going to be pushed back by the wind he's lucky with the bounce oh. I think I would have gone a metre or so to the left linesman referee uh, linesman Rayner so so Michael's waiting in anticipation as uh, Trinity arrives, discussing the line-out move as they go along. Big line-out collected by St. Michael's at the back there. That's Rory Brown doing the necessary, putting the pressure on. Big lines. Oh, what a huge tackle. But he's going to be held offside for that one. Great tackle. on uh, Billy O'Donoghue, I think actually, by Drew Gormley, the number nine. So, Wilhelm de Klerk looking to put them down within uh, the five metre zone, there they are. Catch and drive coming up as uh, Tom Stewart, an interesting player to look out for, about to throw the ball in destined for uh, the professional game we hear. Taken nicely. St. Michael set quickly. Referee having a look. He's looking, looking, looking. Everybody cheering. Both sides saying, we scored, we held up. And the referee says no, it was held up. So fantastic work by Trinity. I think it's their uh, replacement, Quincing. Big long kick takes it down to the halfway line. Boom de Klerk looks a little set off. Big hit. Trinity up quickly, putting the pressure on St. Michael's line, causing the passes to go right. Well collected by Larry Kirkham. Run puts it out. Everybody shouting forward. Flat at best. Lots of pressure. I don't think he's allowed to push the guy like that before he's got the ball. However, St. Michael regroup on their 22. Bit of composure required now. However, isolated, great jackling. By uh, Trinity.
St. Michael's coaching team, member of. Interestingly, uh, referees, um, Trinity's called for a scrum. Uh, got a uh, new player, Kane Fleary, at 16 there. Loose head prop for Trinity. Sorry, tight head prop. Holding that scrum up well. Good scrum. Here come Trinity. Good defence by St. Michael's. Read that well. Now it goes out to the forwards. Kane Fleury takes it forward. Comes back again. Pass is starting to go behind the ball. Good tackle, good cover defence. As uh, Mark Cartel takes it in. Decoy runner taken path, they still retain the ball. Oh, lovely dummy, lovely dummy. Held up and it's a try. All started by Drew Gormley setting the, the dummy out. And it's uh, David Bampoy who uh, puts it over the line for Trinity for them to take a 10 to 8 lead with the conversion to come. Here it is, there's the step and the go. Offload by uh, Connor Byrne. Puts David Bampoy into under the post. Great, uh, great awareness by Drew and uh, Connor. David Vampo, there he is. Conversion successful. 12 points to eight in favor of Trinity. Referee is asking for a ball, it would be useful. No ball, no game. There it comes. From the opposite of end where it was kicked. So, Wilhelm de Klerk to start proceedings again. Kicks it high. Hanging ball with the wind, so much that Michaels get under it nicely, retain the ball. Out it goes, laid back. Number 23, Charles Foley passes, passes it on. Big tackle again coming in from uh, Trinity, causing St. Michael's confusion in their line, and they uh, cross over and bump into each other. So, scrum down. So, pushing before the ball went in. Lays the winger off, little chip forward. Who's, who's got the pace? Oh, unlucky. Oh, tackle before the ball. Knocked forward anyway. So, uh, claims of, uh, could that have been a penalty try? No, because the offence had already been made. Not forward. Max Farrell not happy about that. So Trinity start their attack on uh, with a scrum on St Michael's five metre line. Around four minutes to go before the next water break. Can Trinity make another score?
Ball goes in. Good scrum by St. Michael's. Trinity hold fast. Sent around the back line. Good dummy. He's in. What a wonderful try by Zach Nixon. Show the ball several times. Oh, sorry, by big pun, it's not. It's Josh Bella who uh, scored that. Show the ball. Here it is, there's the show. Steps on the outside. Tackle not good enough. Too high there and uh, goes in to the right of the posts. Great play. Got his outside shoulder. And uh, Patrick Wood couldn't uh, contain the speed and power. So Trinity, three, three tries up. 17-8 with conversion to come. Josh Bellamy does it again. Makes it 19-8 to Trinity. There we go. Hanging ball again. St. Michael's get under it. Contained by Trinity, who do well. Puts a high one back. Fielded by their uh, winger. Who puts a long kick in. That's a great kick in these conditions. Just uh, about a metre beyond uh, Trinity's 22. What can St. Michael's do from here? Still a lot to play for. Got an exciting match coming up after this. Grays versus Grey College versus uh, Cardiff. And referee says not straight. Scrum down to Trinity. Again, this wind causing problems for the line out on everybody's side. And he calls for a water break. in all yellow. finish this uh, water break so at the moment we've got about 250 likes we'd like to try and get to a thousand before the next match so get in touch with friends relatives rugby enthusiasts tell them to get on to the YouTube rugby pass channel and let's give these boys support from the four corners of the rugby world So scrum down on Trinity's 22, with Trinity to put the ball in. Trinity looking to run it out. Bellamy with a big, using that wind in his 22, bounces nicely, sits up, puts some pressure on the uh, Trinity winger. This is number 21. 
James Sherwood making a good darting run. Big tackle again. Lovely offload again. St Michael's keeping the ball alive and starting to get a bit of momentum. Referee saying, I'm not having any of that. You're going over and you're not rolling away. So off your feet, Trinity. You can take 10 metres back and St Michael's look to get the ball into Trinity's 22. They're about a metre short. So can they launch an attack? In, these, uh, in this last session. <laughs> Referee saying, oh, the sub's coming on. This is... I think that's Riggan Cornham. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Oscar Sweeney. Ball hits forward. Free kick, says referee for lifting, jumping for the ball was thrown. And uh, St Michael's has called for a scrum. So uh, we've got Tom Stewart there and Edward McLaughlin in the front row. All new front row and I think Regan Corgan there as, as well. And 21 is James Sherwin who's on for uh, to replace Chris O'Connor. So St. Michael's put in on uh, the 22 of Trinity. Good attacking position. They hold the scrum nicely. Sherwin goes for right. Lovely offload. <coughs> Gets across the game line. Quick recycling by St. Michael's. Hard up as uh, Fraser McKinnon tries to drive forward. Trinity holding their own. Number six there, Sam Carrigan, Corrigan pushing forward. Nice face play. Starting to string some momentum together, St. Michael's. It's James Sherwin is hungry for it, however. Referee is saying no advantage, let's come back. For... I think not rolling away in the tackle. So Wilhelm de Klerk looks to get it <coughs> further back. Oh, going off the feet, I think. Puts it down to the five meter mark. So is, is it gonna be a catch and drive from St. Michael's? to start the scoreboard rolling as we enter the last 10 minutes of this game. All to play for for both sides. Nicely, nicely taken. Here they go. Still rumbling forward. Trinity disrupting. And it's a penalty. I <laughs> still got the ball. He didn't want to let go of that, did he? That's his ball. <laughs> so, St. Michael's. Looking to pick and go. That's number, that's Ryan Corrigan taking it in. Quick ball comes blindside. He's over. Try time. That's Sam Corrigan doing the honours, getting Michael St. Michael's back into the game. A successful conversion. We'll just take it to uh, three points in it, if they can do it. So exciting uh, phase of the game. This is David Lucy going to be taking the kick by looks of things. I know. It's going to be... What's that? Jules Fenland taking the kick. Sam Carrigan, there he is. Successful try scorer. 
Again, one of the stars of uh, St. Michael's side. Important kick. It's looking good. Oh, the wind's pushed it away to the right. So, 1913. Six points difference. St. Michael's going to have to score either a converted try to win or two penalties with around eight minutes, seven minutes to go. So, Bellamy to restart. Kicks into the 22, collected by St. Michael's, who put a big boot back. Oh, he's knocked it forward. Swirling conditions. So, St. Michael's immediately back onto the attack after kickoff. Can they secure a try from here? All the backs are chatting in St. Michael's uh, back line. They've got to move on. Let's see what's going to happen. Looks like they've got a couple of uh, dummy runners going to do the business for them. And. Uh, Patrick Wood on this side, waiting intently for the ball. Good scrum by Trinity. Penalty though. Yeah. Referee saying. Yeah. Boring in. Not uh, pushing straight. So, Willem de Klerk looking to get them down to that five meter mark again. Just short. Just uh, short of it. So, oh, stolen by Trinity. Big drive out. Trinity look to score. Josh Bellamy kicks it uh, long and wide using the wind and uh, successfully takes them out of their 22 to midway between the 22 and their uh, halfway line. And Tom Stewart looks to uh, restart proceedings as St. Michael's regroups to start a second attack. Five minutes left now. Great uh, line out, I'd say. Uh... Oh, lovely ball! They got the, they got the thing. They've taken the part now. He goes in. St. Michael's on the attack. Engineer just sorting out my screen there. Oh, he's broken through. St. Michael's now just a metre or so from the Trinity line. Trinity, desperate defence. He's over. It's a try. Oh, dear. Not what we want to see. That's enough of that. That's enough of that. We don't want that. Thank you very much. This is school rugby boys.
So I said, Michael, need this conversion <laughs> to take a lead. They don't want to. They don't want to show this because it's going to. So Joe Elliott successfully takes the ball over the line for St. Michael's. The referee having a kind of situation down, says it's a try. So Jules Fenland to put St. Michael's into the lead. With just two minutes to play. No doubt here the cheers of the St. Michael's crowd. Three tries all and 20 points to 19 in favour of St. Michael's. And this will most probably be the last kick of the game with uh, just seconds to go. Off we go. Ball hangs high. Taken in by Tr St. Michael's on their 22. Oh, he's Penalty. Offside, says the referee. Eamon. So, Willem de Klerk to clear the lines. I think at this stage, it doesn't matter where it goes. So, Trinity, you've got to win this line out to keep this match alive. So Michael's just got to take it and kick it out. Steal, steal, steal. We need to steal. No ball. That really does hold up proceedings. Ball goes in. Taken in nicely by St. Michael's, who start a bit of a rumble. There it is. Kicked out. And St. Michael's win. A very close one fought match with St. Michael's just getting a last uh, minute try to bring the game to an end. Intensely fought. So Michael's coming back as we now uh, move on to what is going to be an enthralling fixture between Grey College and Cardiff Vale. Uh, as we wait for the players to walk off.
So, we now make way for the first of our Cup semi-finals, Grey College against Cardiff and Vale. Both had great games yesterday. Cardiff and Vale beating uh, St Michael's. And Grey College really working uh, their magic against Trinity. And uh, a poignant uh, moment is going to be. So here's Grey College. Ranyan Fouch, Emil Magier, Jean Erasmus at three, Heinrich Terron at four, Mario Stock fourth at five, Jean Henry Smith at six, Keegan Schultz at seven, JJ Terron at eight, and Christian van der Wesseisen at nine, Ian van der Merve at uh, ten, Hayden Ptolemy at eleven, Peter van der Merve at uh, twelve. Ronaldo Duarte at 13 and Vincent Volhata at uh, 14 and at 15, Alzea Don Felix. And players to look out for are the Hayden Ptolemy and JJ Turin at uh, 8 and uh, number 6, Sean Henry Smith and uh, Jean Erasmus at 3. And for Cardiff Vale. For Cardiff Vale, we've got Cameron Tyler Grocott, Sean Hurley, o Owen James, Evan Saltmarsh, Don Kipulu, Gethin uh, Howells, Evan Weston, Lucas De La Rua, Archie Lloyd, Tom Hughes, Dylan, Tom Dylan Lewis at uh, 11, Ethan Rudry at uh, 12, Elijah Evans at 13, Flynn Baker at 14, and Scott Del Nevo at uh, 15 and the players to look out for there are number 12 Ethan Rudrigi, uh, and number 8 at uh, Lucas de la, de la Rua, number 6 Gethin House, and number 2 Sh Saul Hurley. So this is going to be a fascinating game. As we wait for Grey College to come out. They walk out very quietly. Thank you, thank you. Led out by their captain, JJ Turon. And here come Cardiff and Vale. Cardiff and Vale hoping to do an upset here. And it's referee Simon Craggs from New Zealand taking proceedings. His son Aidan Craggs played in the Odyssey game. Simon is the principal in uh, New Zealand school. So. This is going to be an exciting set of rugby. Cardiff looking to start proceedings with Tom Hughes. Their number 10 taking the ball. Simon Craggs checks with the Grays captain. Are you ready? Off we go. Playing into the wind. Straight away, pressure on Gray. And the referees not rolling away in the tackle. Penalty to Gray. Number five there, Don Kupulu, causing some problems for Gray and uh, holding on. So, in van der Merve looks to use the wind to his advantage. Takes the ball a metre inside, two metres inside Cardiff Fails Terra territory as uh, Emily McGreer looks to throw in taken successfully by Gray Cardiff causing a lot of disruption not allowing Gray to get a march on though they start it now balls come out what 
Cardiff up to it, up to the defence. Gray recycles quickly. Puts it out there, puts their winger in space, it'll chip forward. The referee says, sorry, penalty, tackle off. Offside. So, Van der Merve looking to use that wind and get Gray into an attacking position in Cardiff's 22. Quick discussion on the line out. Emil McGreer throws in, goes long. Cardiff uh, group pretty quickly. Gray starts to put the pressure on with a big rumble. Cardiff holding them at the moment. Referees. Gray still going hard. Great tackle by Cardiff. Have they broken out? Held up by Cardiff. Great defence from Cardiff's uh, Tom Hughes. Holds the ball up nicely. Stop Gray getting their first try. So a kick out from the uh, try line for Cardiff. Kicking into the wind. So uh, needs to keep it low and hard, which he does. Gets up to the 20 up to thing. Big drop goal. Collected by Tom Hughes, who neatly puts it out at uh, the halfway line. That was a great clearance kick. So, quick line out. Big tackles coming in on uh, Gray as Cardiff hold him up. Recycle the ball quickly. Jackling well. And no, referee is saying, sorry, you're going down off your feet to uh, Lucas Delora of Cardiff. So, penalty to Gray. Well, it looks like they're going to take it towards the line. Coaching staff. That actually has been pushed out by the wind. So, in an ambitious attempt to get to the five metre line, it's actually cost uh, Gray a scrummage where the penalty was to Cardiff. First scrum of the game. Be interesting how these two packs step up. Archie Lloyd to put the ball in. Scrum goes down straight away. So, Archelo scrum set by the ref. Nope. Gray hinging. Free kick to Cardiff. Oh, Cardiff go for another scrum. This is a pretty confident move. I feel they've got the edge.
as I say, Saul Hurley of Cardiff Fell, Welsh under ninth uh, Welsh player. Good scrum by Cardiff. Actually getting a nudge on Graves. Ball comes out. Nice play by Cardiff. Just eating up the territory of Gray. Takes them to the Gray's 10 metre line. Still no score. So we're halfway through this first session in the first half. Emil McGreer starts proceedings again. Gray looked to their scrum to take it forward. However, a lot of disruption by Cardiff have got the ball. And they've smuggled it up back. That's great play. Cardiff pot it back. Hughes launches the back line. This is number 15. Scott de Villino. Again, Cardiff looking to uh, take it in. That's his. Kiplu. A referee is going to take them back to an offside. Two metres in on the uh, grey territory. Didn't make the line. Big clearance kicked. Collected by. Steps inside. Nicely done off to Hughes. He's isolated a bit, but Cardiff are there. Retaining the ball well. Still driving forward. Archie Lloyd releases the back line. Big. Big drive from number one, Tyler Cockett. And we've got a penalty for, looks like somebody. Uh, Cardiff's nine has got a bit of a problem. Cardiff up for the post. This is Tom uh, Tom Hughes looking to put Cardiff in the lead. Does it successfully. Cardiff three, Gray nil. And we're just around about the 10 minute mark. So, Adam Murr gets a restart going. And Dylan Lewis puts it out. Oh, what a great touch. And it's taken in. So, Saul Hurley, start the line-out proceedings. Taken nicely by Cardiff, John Kipalu, but however, it's not straight, says the referee. So, scrum to uh, Gray. So, 
sorry, it wasn't taken by, it was actually taken in by Gethin Howells. So, Christa van der Westhazen looks to start proceedings for Gray. Just about two metres beyond the 10 metre line of uh, Cardiff. All doing the Faf de Klerk ball thingy. Not sure what value that adds to the game. So, big scrum by Cardiff. And. Uh, Cardiff like that, Gray boring in, not scrummaging straight. It's a real interesting battle this. So Hughes. Takes it about 20 metres forward. Just in front of uh, the grey 10 metre line. And Saul Hurley looks to put in. Again, not straight, says the referee. So problems for Cardiff's line as uh, Evan Weston takes the ball. The uh, Sean Hurley says, well, I thought that was straight. Referee Craggs says no. So, grey scrum. Van der Vesthazen to put it in. Referee says, settle it down, boys. Listen to McCall. I'm in charge here, not you. The grey bench looks on, waiting for their turn. And referee Craggs is just going to have a chat to the pack leaders to say, look guys, this is what we need. Let's play the game, not each other. Listen to my calls. So, there we go. That's what a chat with the referee does. Good scrum, good clearance, quick clearance. So, Gray. Looks penetrate. Resets the ball. Big tackle by uh, Evan Schultmarsh. Puts pressure on. Ball knocked forward by Gray in the tackle. Just not happening for Gray at the moment. Starting to make inroads, but uh, just loses a bit of momentum. Coming up to the end of the first quarter and a water break. So it's all going on there, isn't it? <laughs> These are wonderfully talented men. And uh, Owen James has a chat to the linesman. He says, chat to the referee. That's Cardiff's bench waiting to get on. Again, it goes down. The referee says, that's enough. I'm not having any of this. They take it quickly. The referee says, no, I want it taken where I put the penalty.
And he says, no, we're going to have a water break instead. So, 10 minute water break. Carve just three points in the lead. opportunity to break clear who would have thought that those two coaches play prop wonderful characters had some lovely discussions with them over this last uh, couple of days. So we restart with a penalty to Cardiff. Great, great captain JJ Torrent had a quick chat with uh, Simon Craggs at the start of water break. Obviously, not happy about something. And uh, Tom Hughes puts Cardiff 10 metres further forward into grey territory. And Saul Hurley prepares to put in. Get a good understanding of the challenges now. Let's see how straight this is. That looks pretty straight to me. Ooh, jumping across the line, I'd say, by Gray. And they're saying no, knocked on. Robin. So, Gray put in. What can they work from here? Essays and waits for referee Simon Craig's instruction. Ball goes in. Finally, a decent scrum from both sides. Keeps the ball alive. Lewis tackles well. He's away. Kept in play well, however, wrapped up by Evan Weston. Gray still with the ball, tackling, driving forward. Cardiff's number four goes over, Evan Saltmarsh. Still good ball retention by Gray. Everybody going in for it. A little bit of football. Is he through? I'm not sure what's happened there. I'm waiting for a call. This is Van der Vestes Hazen going through. He's going to chat to his linesman about it. Let's have a look. So he kicks on. Turns Scott Devlino. Did he knock it on? Let's have a look. Here it is again. No, the referee is saying but if for a knock on in the build up to that try 
by Gray. So we're back to just uh, five metres in from the halfway line in Cardiff's territory. And uh, Archie Lloyd to start proceedings for Cardiff's attempt to get forward. And so referee Simon Craig is still not happy with this uh, front row. He's laying down the law. I think he's getting pretty impatient with it. Saying, come on, boys, let's just get on with it. A lot of movement as they go down in the bind corners. There's the bind. And there's all the movement. Quick ball in. It's a good solid scrum by Cardiff. They release their back line. Good hands. And now this is uh, Flynn Baker with the ball. Held up in the tackle by Gray. Still moving forward. Still moving forward. Still got the ball and the referee says, there we go, ball called. Ball didn't come out, Gray Singh. A little bit off the ball, niggle. Cardiff uh, saying X, Y, Z and uh, Simon Craig saying didn't see it, let's play on. Quite right, two. So, scrum down. Land of S. Hazen to put it in for Gray. Are we going to see JJ Terron take it out from the back line? I move it, or is it just going to go straight to Ian van der Merv? Let's see. It goes straight to Ian van der Merv, who now misses out. A little inside pass, big tackle. Cardiff read that well. Little chip forward. Penalty for crossing his line, stopping uh, Gray to get the ball. Changing channels, I think, is the phrase. So, can Gray put it down into the corner and, and look to uh, get a move from there? Here we go. No, nope. just puts it about uh, 10 metres further. I think that after that last kick where he put it into the dead ball, he's been a lot more cautious. So uh, Emil McGreer looks to restart. Ball goes up, goes past. Ball is free. Who's first? Cardiff kicks through by uh, Lucas de Larue. Picked up by Gray, who now puts it high. Great take by Cardiff's uh, Scott Pallet de Lavina, who goes on, releases Cardiff. Now they're away. Are they in the corner? Kick forward. Oh, still going strong. Cardiff causes the door, dab down, and referee says five metre scrum. Pressure all on Gray at the moment, with about five minutes to go in this first half. Great breakout by Cardiff, started by Scott Delavino. JJ Teron and uh, still talking to Simon Craggs. Cardiff's put in. Archie Lloyd. To see what can happen here. Free kick again. Gray not taking the uh, weight. Cardiff calls scrum again. Ball in. Quick ball. Delarue picks it up. Drives forward. 
Cardiff uh, reset. Oh, he's knocked it forward. So, uh, good intentions, however, the uh, pastor, Tom Hughes, way down at his feet, causes the ball to knock forward. Scrub to Gray, so hopefully they'll re release some pressure now. Very tight match. Two evenly uh, balanced sides here. Great back lines, great forwards. What's going to happen here? Four minutes to go to the end of the half, and the ref says, Sorry, Cardiff, you're boring down. So you can uh, have a penalty against you. Very clear about that. So Gray can relax, look to put a big kick in. Lewis down here on the uh, left wing waits and uh, just gets it to about the 10 meter line. Still in uh, Gray's territory. So uh, territory wise, Cardiff uh, has had uh, the better percentage and possession wise, I'd say it's about equal. Interesting ball, knocked forward again. Gray just not firing and uh, Cardiff causing a lot of disruption in the line out. What can Cardiff do from here? JJ Terron with his head down thinking, gosh, what's going wrong? Regroup guys, start again. Here we go. So Archie Lloyd, stop Cardiff's attack. Big scrum by Grays. One against the head. One on Gray. Inside pass, nicely offloaded. Hughes holds the proceedings up with a tackle. Snipes passed. Is he through? Van der Vesthazen looking to make a dash for the line. Picked up nicely. Tackle. Oh, my Lord. And it's a try. Oh. What a fortunate uh, for uh, number 12. Peter van der Merv following up. Rather than holding in and just taking a five metre scrum, Cardiff looking to offload. Gives an advantage. Pops it back. Cardiff miss it. And uh, van der Merv taps it down. Try. Thank you very much. Can't really. Uh... So Elijah Evans caught napping in his goal line. Gives the benefit to Gray. And I have to say they don't uh, against the runner play. But well done, Gray. I think the referee will call time after this kick. As we go into scrum half. Is successful. So five, seven points to three. Gray takes uh, into half time.
Get him with them. Let's go. Huge loss to get him. Fellowship support from other nations. So as we wait for the players to come on, uh, let's give you some uh, facts about Gray College, founded in 1855 by George Gray of uh, Grey High and Auckland Grammar. Um, it's, had, it's produced 46 spring box and 32 junior box and 115 under 18 internationals. So it's a absolute factory for the spring box. Um, Cardiff, uh, comprised of Cardiff and Vale in the name. Uh, Ready Welsh champions two years in a row. Formed in only 2011 by a merger of Barry College and Coles Glen Huff and uh, three Cardiff players are Welsh under 18 development squad which we've been talking about already so here we go second half all to play for in this cup semi-final Grey versus Cardiff and Vale Van der Merve to start proceedings Ray playing into the wind, nice hanging kick. And they've got the ball already. Quick recycling, oh, he's knocked it forward. This is gonna be the challenge, playing into the wind. So, can't notice any changes at the moment. Can you see any changes? I think, I think, I think uh, 
same, same sides are on. Everybody waiting for these last 30 minutes to make their changes. And it's a very tight game. Gray scoring a big scrum by Gray. Cardiff holds. Hughes feeds. Good step. Lewis with the ball, however. He said forward pass. So Gray has to put in. Just five metres away from the red zone of Cardiff. Dylan Lewis collecting the ball on the far wing there for Cardiff and Vale. Oh, we've got a replacement scrum half. That's uh, Philip McLaren of uh, Grey College. He's on in, in replacement of Christoph van der Westhazen. Puts the ball in. Big scrum by Cardiff. Going blind. Great play. Putting the pressure on Grey already. Gray using their fours to punch a hole in the backs. Cardiff is ready for it. Went backwards, says referee, kicked on. Hughes all over it. Referee saying no, no holding on. Big kick by uh, Van der Merv. 50-22 there. So, Cardiff's uh, Flynn Baker finding it difficult to handle that ball. Allowing it to get into touch. To a label, uh, Emil McGreer to start proceedings. Henrik Teron takes the ball. The referee holding back. Big drive by Gray. Got a rumble on. Philip McLaren looks for the ball, spends it wide. Taken in by Van der Merve. Still going wide. A little pop inside, gets across the game line. However, the referee says offside uh, by uh, Lewis. And uh, penalty to Gray. So Cardiff under the cosh. Gray looks to dink it out for. Uh, I think he's aiming for the lake there. And. Uh, so, catch and drive by Gray. Commentating box reckons it's going to be something like that. So Emil Greer looks to put it in. Taken by Kurgan Schultz. Gray set, look to go. Still going, still going. However, Referee says, going into each other. Therefore, it's a scrum to Cardiff. Player came round, hit into another player. JJ Turon discussing it with the referee, doesn't think it's the case. So, That's uh, Cardiff's Evan Weston, does his shoelace up. Gets ready for uh, Archie Lloyd. Start proceedings on their five metre line. Cardiff can expect a big push by Gray here to force a penalty. Here it comes, look at that, there's a surge held up by Cardiff. Good clearance, however it doesn't find touch. Pass dropped. And uh, 
Flynn Baker causing the problems. And there's the penalty to Cardiff following up, putting pressure on the back line. Bit of back chat by Gray. They're not liking this. And uh, Cardiff now on the offensive. Meter out as uh, Tom Hughes looks to put Cardiff within meters of the uh, Gray touch line, uh, try line. About five meters out from their five meter line. Saul Hurley with the ball. Part of the Welsh under 18 squad. Goes up, short line out, disrupted by uh, Gray. Hurley picks up, retains the ball. So knocked on by. Uh, Knocked on by uh, Gray and uh, scrum to Cardiff. Good attacking position. What are they going to do from here? They're packing their back line, so it could be a back line move. Lewis on the far wing and uh, Finn, Flynn Baker on the uh, near wing looking to come in to the line. Great scrum from both sides. Great. There's the uh, drive forward. However, referee says penalty offside. So, Cardiff looking to put it into the corner for a five meter line out. There we go. I'm going to have to take this line, line out cleanly. Who's it going to? Evan Saltmarsh, Don Kiplu, Cardiff's four and five. Cameron Tyler Grucox tells Saul Hurley what the call is. And away we go. It's actually taken by De La Rue. And Cardiff now try to set as Gray put on the uh, mall, holding it up nicely. And again, Simon, referee Simon Craggs has a chat as Gray tried to disrupt. Gives a warning by the sounds of it as Gray tried to disrupt the Cardiff attack. Time on again. So Cameron Tyler Grucox tells Sean Hurley where it's going. It's again taken by Evan Saltmarsh. Cardiff drive forward. Within the five metre, oh, still driving in, leaving it to the forwards to do the work, picking and going. They're over it, they're gonna get it. No, the ball on hand. We've got a nasty injury, goes out wide to Lewis. What can Lewis do with this? Steps inside. Referee blows his whistle, looks like we've got a bit of an injury on the uh, last breakdown. Cardiff's uh, physio very, on very quickly. So, the teams regroup. Big match coming up on after this with uh, Millfield versus Hamilton. So we'll see second hacker of the day. Score stands at uh, seven points to three in favor of Gray. An opportunist try as uh,
Cardiff uh, lose control in the goal, uh, goal area of the ball. Captain Sean Hurley has a chat to Simon Craggs, asking him to keep an eye on something. And uh, I think he's calling an early water break whilst uh, the physios uh, look after the injured player. So, Grey College, we were talking about the uh, Springbok factory that um, they produce. Ruin Pina, Francois Stolle, Oli LaRue are all in their alum alumni. And uh, interesting uh, point for you, Henrik Turrent and Mario Stoffreth are cousins in the grey pack, the two locks. So, Cardiff have uh, had a replacement, had a, and I think it's Evan Saltmarsh who's come off. comes number 21 for Cardiff L, Luke Kappel as uh, Gethin Howes moves into lock and uh, Luke Kappel goes on the blind side Cardiff put him and we've got another hold up after all of that Gray sorting out something. Their subs. So, not enough men in the scrum. They put an extra man in the scrum. So, Cardiff put in on Gray's five metre line. What can they do from here? It's a good scrum, it holds. Hughes feeds. Gray's defence is there. Goes wide. Goes into Lewis. And Lewis is across. And there we go. Wow, here we are. Game on. 8 7 to, Car to Cardiff and Vale against Gray. A well worked move. Draws in the Gray's defence and then spreads it out wide for a one on one. He's delighted. Well done, Dylan Lewis. There's the ball from Hughes. And then uh, Scott Delavino puts Sir Lewis into the corner. And he's ecstatic about that. Look at that. One he'll remember for his uh, rugby career, no doubt. Gray sort of running out of numbers. So, one point in it, with the conversion to come. Important kick, because that'll make it three points. That's not Dylan Lewis. This is uh, Tom Hughes taking the kick. Unsuccessful. Drifted to the left with the wind. So, uh, one point in it, and all to play for. Around 15 minutes uh, to go, although we did have stoppage time, so don't uh, look at that clock. We'll try and keep you informed of the time. Number 22 for Gray, Heinz Stolz, Stoch, Stockenstrom kicks off. Cardiff retains the ball, although it's all going on there with uh, Gray disrupting and they've actually won it back. 
big jackling. The Seuss have made several substitutions. We'll try and get the numbers for you. Trying to bust the line of Cardiff. Cardiff holding at the moment. They're getting across the game line. Ball goes out wide to their 14. Big tackle. Big tackle. 16. Man, the, the touchline coming into play. Great tackle by uh, Flint Baker on his opposite number. Hayden Ptolemy. Sorry, I beg your pardon, it was uh, Vincent Volhunter. So Cardiff put in about two metres forward of their 22. Saul Hurley giving his instructions, taken in by number six, uh, Gethin Howes. However, referee saying free kick to Cardiff. Jumping across the line, I think. Tom Hughes looking to put a bomb up. There it goes. No runners though for Cardiff. Big tackle and it's straight out. So advantage eventually to Cardiff as uh, Alexander Felix puts a touch in and receives a big tackle in the process. Here you go. Great catch, big kick, big tackle. So Cardiff line out, in they come. Who's going to be taking the ball? Not straight. Again, this wind causing havoc for both uh, teams in their line out. Owen James, a bit frustrated. That's uh, Saul Hurley, our Simon Cragg. Some clarity on uh, the throw-ins. Coaching team of uh, Cardiff and Vale look on. Scrum by Grays. Contains the ball, they go blind. With uh, Philip McLaren moving it forward. Grays retain the ball. McLaren now feeds. To... However, the referee is saying, using the shoulder, and that's a penal penalty. No arms in the tackle. Hughes looks to put it into uh, Gray 22. So 19 on Skulk to Plessis for Gray. Taken by Lucas De La Roy. Cardiff set. Get a good position on. Grays are up for it. Cardiff moving forward, getting a rumble on. Hughes, sorry, Lloyd Weeks for the ball. Still going forward. There's the ball. Oi. Picked up on a offside so what's Cardiff going to do are they going to kick for a penalty or are they going to uh, go for touch they're asking for a scrum 
Here we go. And they're looking to score a try. So, uh, 17, Vernon Shamer, also on. Number 20, Liam Santos on for Gray as well. Ball in quickly. Look, De La Rue picks up. Bosch is uh, one, gets through another, still going forward. Held up now. Now his tackle is made, so the players have to release. And uh, they've managed to win the ball back. Taken in, referee uh, Craig says. Didn't filter it out. So rightly so, it goes to Gray. Big tackles in uh, defence made by Gray to give them back the ball, take control of this uh, part, and the referee calls a water break. So from two minute water break, we can then add on 15 minutes after that. So it'll take us past the hour before we get to the end of this game. So we move into the last uh, session of this enthralling game. Two very evenly balanced sides with strong packs and uh, strong back lines. It's been a real tussle to and fro. Don Kipolo from Cardiff strides out, ready for this uh, big scrum, which is uh, Gray's ball, after they uh, uh, held up the ball in the tackle. Cardiff looking to put the nudge on. Cardiff 22 on. Evan Prosser in replacement for uh, Evan Weston. Big scrum by Cardiff. Oh my lord. What a pressure in that front row. Well played by Gray as they look to bosh them way out. Picked up by uh, JJ Terron. Cardiff making it difficult for uh, Gray to get out of their 22. Again, looking to move the ball. Finally, the kick comes. Charge down by Cardiff. Oh, and it goes to a 22 dropout. Quick thinking by uh, Gray College. Puts the pressure on Cardiff, who uh, I think player needed to gather his breath after that uh, charge down. Cardiff replacement scrum half is on. That's Seven Prosser for Archie Lloyd. 
So we're all back together again. Again, a big scrub by Cardiff. And they get the they get the nudge, they put the pressure on the grey forwards. They can't uh, seem to hold the shove from Cardiff. And the penalty's won as the front row is lifted up, loses its binding. So Cardiff, what are they gonna do? Kick in the corner? So Hughes puts it down there. A little nudge on the five meter. So here come Cardiff. Gray's complaining about Cardiff being slow. Cardiff comes to the ball, Sean Hurley puts it in. Who's the jumper? Number eight, Delarue. Cardiff set well with a rumble. Still going. Held up now by... Now they recycle quickly. Number 12 taking it in, which was uh, Ethan Rudy. They go out wide, steps inside by Scott Delavino. Again, held up in the tackle. Now it goes to ground. Have they got numbers to protect that ball? Yes, they have. Delarue takes it forward. Again, it goes off to the left, it goes wide. Long pass out. Whoa, go for a walk, my boy. Ethan Rudy, that is. Cardiff retained the ball well. This is Lewis looking for the protection of his forwards. Referee's got his arm up for a penalty for offside by Gray. So Gray need to watch the enthusiasm. That was number 21 who was offside, Philip McLaren. So we've got an injury to Cardiff. Fizzo patches him up. And uh, Tom Hughes. Looks to uh, go for goal. Vice Principal Kevin there brings out his tea. There it is, successful conversion. Cardiff and Vell College 11, Gray College 7. So Van der Merve looks to restart, kicks it long. Ball called. Big kick down. Takes it into touch. Just uh, in front of uh, Gray College's 10 metre line. Please don't look at the clock because we had an injury stoppage time. So he most probably got out two or three minutes to play. Gray making the call. It's number 16. The inventor looks to put the ball in. Goes up, nicely done. Taken by uh, Mario Stroffworth. Gray looking to rumble it up using the powerful forwards. Cardiff holding in there. Now they put it wide. Van der Merve looking to break through. Unsuccessfully. There's the uh, Chalet. Nope. Which way is the referee pointing? 
handling in the ruck, says the referee. So, just in front of their 10 metre line. Great things, and the ball goes high. Doesn't go very far. Great coaches complaining to the referee. Ball goes up, nice line out, however, it doesn't get there. Cardiff number nine, so knocked forward by Gray. And the referee says they're knocked on by Cardiff. So he'll take the first knock on, which is a Cardiff ball. So, Cardiff with the put-in. Big scrum by Gray, big scrum, good control. Loses the ball, however. Oh, well played. Well played. Still going. Archie Lloyd doing the necessary. De La Rue does it. Big kick down, is that gonna go? Picked up by the number 15, Alexander Felix. Looking to use his pace and step. Still going. Knocked on. Loose pass. It's not working out for Gray. Time off, says referee. As we've got a, a knock to... Uh, Owen James, just getting some attention from the uh, physio. Looks like he got a bit of a stinger. Everybody gasping for breath. That's Carlos number six, Gethin Howes. So, Cardiff put in. Very few minutes left in this game. At the moment, Cardiff have it, 11 to 7. Hughes puts in, scrums holds. Picks up. Well, well scragged by Grace, however. Penalty. Craig saying boring him. Perhaps this is the last opportunity for Grey College. Again, puts it high, which was going to force the wind to push it back. Not the best tactic. Get it! So, Emil McGrea puts it in. Gray take it. Puts a rumble on. The referee has his arm out. Advantage Gray. Entering from the side, I think. I've got a is Gray going to pull this one out of the bag? Big kick down into the corner. Cardiff under pressure. Closer. About a metre, two metres short of the five metre line. All in. This must be the one of the last plays of the game. Very exciting. Taken by Gray, big uh, push by Cardiff, holding them up. Now Gray get the push on. Now they're going, still going, still going, still going. Still going. 
Referee stops his clock. He's saying, pause. I haven't made a decision yet. He's going to go and check with his linesman. This could be a momentous decision. It's a try. They've won it in the last moment. Unlucky Cardiff. I imagine this will be the last kick of the match. Against the run of play, Gray's pulled it out the bag. Successfully taken, and there it is, 14 points to 11, a valiant effort by Cardiff and Vale to cause perhaps what was going to be a big upset in this uh, festival of rugby, Gray was probably the favourite to win it, but uh, great play by Cardiff, took it all the way down to the last minute. Well played both sides, quality rugby. And now we prepare for the second cup semi-final, Millfield versus Hamilton. And we've... Uh, Got our second hacker of the day coming up. of uh, the second day at the World School Festival and it's our second cup semi-final. Hamilton Boys School from New Zealand versus Millfield from England. A lot of interest in this game. Um, and we'll have our second hacker. We have uh, on Hamilton Boys, Ruarea Palmer. Tom McCarthy, Will Martin, it's the front row. Christian McEwen and Tama Hodgson are the locks. And Liam Stern, Liam Anderson and Ollie Matas are the back row. Mark Russ, Wyndham Patoa, Zach Coffey, Hiraka Watai Hanga is 12. Akai Tuivarbala is number 13. Kalis Patuko is number 14. And Curtis Hanna is number 15. And their coach, Nigel Hossam. And for Millfield, we've got Lone Emmanuel at one, Harry Beasley at two, Ollie Davis at three, Hayden Ebsworth at uh, four, Bobby Mulvey at five, Ben Beale at six, Ollie Wilkinson at seven, George Timmons at eight, Osh Catland at nine, Owen Erasmus at uh, ten, Matt Hall 
at 11. Will Little Stubbings at uh, 12. Josh Levenstein at 13. 14, Matt Rickard. And 15 is Tom Howlett. With their coach, John Mallett. Referee is Christo Erasmus from South Africa. So uh, we wait for the size to take the field and we'll have a hacker from Hamilton and uh, a poignant moment will be you'll see Milford putting a number 10 shirt on the halfway line during the hacker. Now the story behind that is that uh, a former old Milfilian age 24, Kian Kennedy. Uh, sadly, his funeral was uh, held today in New Zealand. Kian was a proud Kiwi and uh, his family lived in New Zealand. He was a Millfield first, uh, first 15 fly half. Uh, and uh, may his soul rest in peace. Kian Kennedy. You see the, the shirt being placed now. Milford wait to accept the challenge from Hamilton. So Hamilton led out by Akai Tuavola, their captain. As they place their caps on the halfway line. There's a way of honouring. Should be an interesting game this. Challenge is met. Rugby will start. Enthusiastic look from Kayla's Peraco, who's uh, New Zealand under 18 international.
So, Wyndham Patawa to start proceedings in this last semi-final cup match and the last match of day two of uh, rugby of the World Schools Festival Rugby 2022. And Christo Erasmus starts proceedings. Off we go. Hangs in the air. Taken in by Bobby Mullis of Millfield. Big crunching tackles already coming in. Clever little nudge. Good little box kick. Simon Craggs marks the mark. About five metres into Hamilton territory. As Tom McCarthy prepares to throw in for Hamilton. Nice line out. Taken in. Across the game line already. Hamilton's putting the ball wide. This is uh, Peyton Spencer. Penalty. Diving over off your feet, says uh, referee Christo. We've actually been, we're going to have some challenges with the Hamilton name because uh, what we've sent in, they seem to have changed the uh, squad. So we're not sure who's um, taken Peyton Spencer's place. Good line out from Hamilton. Secures the ball. Here they come. Big Bosch, well tackled by uh, Will Stubbins of Millfield. Millfield yet to get possession of the ball. Good clear out and again, good recycling from uh... and there we go. Millfield now have uh, a great jackal, putting immense pressure on Wyndham Patoa. And uh, it's going to be Tom Howlett who's going to put the ball into Hamilton's half. Which he successfully does around about the halfway line, I think. There we go, metre in. Referee Christo asks for the Millfield line to come in. Ball arrives as Harry Beagles. Beagles prepares to throw in. Taken by their number eight, George Timmons. Oh, there's the gap. Pushed forward by Bobby Mullers. And uh, Hamilton offside. So Tom Howlett again looks to put uh, Millfield into their 22. He does that successfully. Pretty good kick as well. Right on the five metre line. So what can Millfield do here? Uh, Hamilton coach. Great uh, defence by Hamilton as Milton looks to get the nudge on. The ref has called it once. Ball now with Oli. Spins it out to Owen Erasmus, who keeps going forward. Great jackling. 
by Hamilton's number 10, Wyndham Patoa, who now looks to clear their line. Hamilton's bench, desperate to get on. So, about equal distance between uh, Hamilton's 10 metre and the halfway line. Tom McCarthy, praying to throw in. Picked up by Tamman Hodgson. Quick ball, oh, he's dropped it. Pressure from uh, Millfield's uh, Ollie Davis, who's uh, England under 20, uh, under 19. Uh, sorry, under 18 player. Uh, putting pressure on uh, Akai Tuavala. I'm sorry, Will Martin. Hamilton Physio waits uh, in anticipation. First scrum of the day, I think, for both these packs. Let's see how they go. Just found out who the uh, number 15 is for the Hamilton. It's Curtis Hanna. Scrum reset. Referee not happy. So we uh, would like to get more likes, please, from everybody. Big scrum by Hamilton. Millfield responds. So it's uh, Owen Erasmus looking to make a, a dart in. Big tackles coming in from Hamilton. Managed to retain the ball as uh, Ollie Wicken takes it in. Again, fed back. Big crash through. The line as Millfield looks to lose its forward, put into the gap is Will Scubbins. Stubbins. Millfield trying to get across the game line, popping the passes. A little chip through, which could go all the way, which it does. So, pressure from uh, Hamilton coming off the line causing uh, Millfield, Ted and Erasmus to try to chip over the top, but it actually, with the wind, goes a bit far. So it's a scrum down. Still no points either side. There's the Millfield bench ready to come on. Mac Roos for Hamilton, look as he put in. Referee not happy. Referee Christo saying, let's get our binds right. Let's keep, uh, keep the scrum up. So Hamilton with a big scrum. The number eight. Uh, Oli Mathias takes it forward. However, the referee calls for a penalty. It's his hand, is it? Okay. So Milton, uh, Millfield decides to run it. A player isolated. Clears out and they've won it. Hamilton's won it back. Winner Patoa 
does a 50-22. Hamilton on the charge. Apparently Peyton, Peyton Spencer is playing. So our apologies for the confusion in the uh, sheet. Oh, went over the top and collected by Millfield. Lays it back. Oh. So, here comes Peyton Spencer. Ball inside, not forward. By Hamilton, picked up by Millfield. Number 13, Josh Levenstein, clears the ball out. Goes high, ball still in play. However, referee blows up. Saying knock on, no advantage to Millfield, so we'll take a scrum back at the five meter mark. Not sure if they'd allow the play on. Hamilton uh, at the moment showing dominance in the set piece against uh, Millfield. Let's see if Milford can respond. Can you just grab the second headgear out of number five In the front row of uh, Ollie Davis there, number three. Milford coach looks on. Penalty. Hamilton collapsing. So, great to see we're up to 7,000 viewers watching this as uh, Milford looks to break out. They can't afford to be isolated against this Hamilton side. They uh, seem offside is not called. As Milford look to now defend. And they spread it wide. Wyndham Pantua looks to break the line and he's dropped it again on that other wing. Sadly, that was Kalis Perolo. Perloco. Still nil-nil as Hamilton maintained the pressure in Millfield's 22. About three minutes to go till uh, a water break. Which at the rate that this game has been played, I'm sure they'll uh, enjoy. As Millfield's number nine, Ollie Catlin, prepares to put in. Milfield holds the scrum up well, referee in the way a bit. Oh, he feeds it to his forwards to take control, looking to lay it back most probably. Big box kick coming up, there it goes. Not sure if it's wise to kick against these three guys at the back here. Great tackle. And it's been jackaled away. So referee Christo says ball moving forward. So Hamilton ball. So uh, first replacement for Millfield as uh, we see Henry Bonetti take to the field playing tight head prop Hamilton with the nudge 
Back move coming up, spreading it wide. Spencer with the ball, breaks another tackle. He's proving to be a danger. Gets the break in the line. This is Hamilton causing it. Aki Tuavala taking it forward. Great defence by Milford. Ref calls time. There's the first water break of the first half. So, nil-nil after the first 15 minutes in this enthralling second cup semi-final of the World Schools Festival 2022. So whilst we uh, wait for the boys to get refreshed, uh, just a bit on Hamilton School, founded in 1955, uh, and uh, they play in the Super 8 competition and the, the Chiefs competition. They've uh, produced 10 All Blacks, 22 under 20 internationals and 54 under 18 internationals, so it's a real factory of players. Alumni include uh, Seville Rees. Keir Barlow, Toa Keir Barlow, and Warren Gatlin, who's just uh, gone and coached, uh, returned to Wales as coach. Uh, they are 13 times the Super 8 winners, and nine times uh, winners of the Chief Trophies since 2010. Uh, and they've won five national champions, including this year's 2022. So a very uh, prestigious school. Factory for the All Blacks. We'll talk about Millfield after the next break. So, referee reminding the forwards about uh, binding and how he wants it on the cry for set. Replacement uh, again for Millfield on their front row. Just try and get his number. Big scrum by Hamilton. Oh, wowzer. Really starting to uh, put the pressure on Millfield. So it's uh, Ben Adobe at uh, wearing the 19 shirt for Millfield, who's come on. He's uh, replaced Ollie Davis. There's the Hamilton bench, desperate to get on. Hamilton call a short line out, taken nicely by Ollie Wilkinson. However, the referee says not straight. He's not happy. He's not happy. So Matt Cruz looks to put in for Hamilton. Big squeeze, big push. Great scrum. Recycled. Spencer with the ball again. Lovely pass. Off to the 16th man, the touchline. Never mind. Intent was there. We saw it coming. Looking to... Uh, Release Zach Coffee by looks of things. On 
unsuccessful though. Good disruption, nice uh, steal from um, by Hamilton as they look to quickly recycle the ball. Number number two powering over and he drops the ball again. Hamilton just isn't going their way on the ball. But are we sure about that? The referee says no. It's uh, scrum down. Rightly so. In fact, it's a twenty. It's a baseline dropout because he knocked the ball forward into the goal area. Millfield with the wind, so I imagine he's looking to kick this as far as he can. Spencer takes it in. Already they've made back the ground. Loose tackling by Millfield lets them get into the 22 successfully. However, the jackling as the player went to ground by Millfield wins them a penalty. Still 0 0 after 21 minutes. What an enthralling game. So, Millfield clear their lines take play up to uh, two metres short of their 10 metre line. Oh! Harry Beagles looks to restart Millfield's march towards the Hamilton half. Again, the ball goes far. Collected by Hamilton, who seems just that little bit more hungry for the ball. Good hands. Good tackle. Good clear out. Liam Anderson takes it in. Again, Mac Roos looks to recycle. Taken up by Will Martin. Again, 90, number nine recycles as Tama Hodgson looks to power his way through, but the Millfield defence is holding strong at the moment. Flick inside to Carlos Spencer. Again, well read by Millfield. Number two there, Tom McCarthy looking to drive forward. Oh, almost intercepted, and now they. Look to Pirouet, great tackle on Kalos Poloko. And uh, coming in from the side for the clear out penalty. So great defence by Millfield. Under immense pressure from Hamilton, keeps the score at 0 0. Actually, it's uh, coming off their feet, I think. So, Millfield kicks the ball out, doesn't get very far. They've got a player needing some treatment. Looks like uh, the Millfield Hayden Ebsworth, I think. Just checking the numbers. So whilst we wait, uh, please don't uh, hesitate to subscribe to the uh, Rugby Pass YouTube channel. And let's have some more likes. We got uh, almost 8,000 likes yesterday. Let's see if we can beat it today. In fact, are we... So let's see if we can get uh, a higher score today. So, seems restarted. Millfield's uh, George Timmons slaps it down. 
making it difficult for number for the number nine who does well to recover. Ball goes out, cleared up. Hollison puts it out wide. Oh, there's a bit of an overlap here. Can they use it? Offloaded again. Everybody's trying their best out there. All using enterprising rugby, looking to find the gaps where they can. Just the offload a bit too aggressive to handle. Went behind the player. Taken cleanly by Christian Hosson. Now Hamilton start their rumble towards uh, Millfield's line. Ball in hand is Tom McCarthy. Breaks off to the blind side. Millfield over it, cleared out. Matt Roos looks to set his backs in motion. Big uh, offload. Now it's uh, off to Carlos Spencer, who looks like the go-to man. Big tackle. Peyton Spencer, sorry, not Carlos, his father. Again, Hamilton probing the defences. Millfield comes up. This is Akai Tuavala. Breaks one tackle. Breaks another tackle. Still going forward. Puts his uh, team a metre out. Millfield, desperate defence as they drive forward and it's a try. Oh, he said... No. He said held up. He said held up. Hamilton uh, claiming foul to the linesman. But referee Christo says held up. Tremendous defence by Millfield keeps the score at nil-nil with four minutes to go at this half time till half time. So a kick down the middle, goes straight to the uh, Zach Coffey, the uh, 11. And a penalty. Going off their feet, taken quickly by Millfield. Looking step, and the referees, I think, spotted that one. Hamilton seem to be getting a, bit, a little bit frustrated with the things are going. He's going to reach for a card. And it's uh, Hamilton's Mac Ross, number nine, who takes six minutes in the sin bin. In the naughty boy's chair. So Millfield looking to use the wind and uh, get three points on the board before the end of the first half. Millfield's kicker is Tom Howlett. Left footer. So it's probably aiming for the left hand upright. Certainly got the legs, and uh, unfortunately, unsuccessful. So, moving to the final minute of the half, and it's going to be a 22 dropout by Hamilton. Peyton Spencer puts a big kick in, almost to the other 22, caught by his opposite number, who then puts a big chip in. Well caught by uh, 
Oli Mathias. Another big kick in, and we end up five metres short of the halfway line in Hamilton's half. So, territorially wise, it's been equal on both sides, although I think uh, Hamilton has the edge. And uh, possession wise, about the same. Hamilton had a strong start in the first session of this half. So, Millfield's Harry Bills puts it in, taken in cleanly, span out by the scrum half. Stepped inside, knocked forward. The referee saying we've still got time to play. This last uh, phase uh, of this half, I'd imagine. And uh, Millfield returns its front row, starting front row, two proceedings. Oh, good step by uh, Hamilton's number eight who offloads. Back row coming into play now. Oli Mathias to Liam Sturm. Now it's their powerhouse front row. Will Martin driving through. Ball set back to their backs. Tackle well. Carlos Spencer looking to put his winger into the line and it's a try to Hamilton. Scored by Kalis Poloko. Congratulations to Hamilton in the last throws of the first half. They take the lead. Five points to nil. Great step. Leaving Marco Rickard. Kalis Patuko, successful try scorer and uh, New Zealand under 18 player, we're told. Congratulations to him. So, a challenging kick for Hamilton. About a metre and a, two metres in from the touchline. As Wyndham Patua looks to add two points to make it 7 0 at half time. He's got the legs nice and he's successful. Head. Seven points to nil. Hamilton lead Millfield as half time is called.
With Tom Howard kicking off. <laughs> Referee Christo checks with Hamilton. Are they all ready? Checks with uh, the Millfield captives. They're ready. Let's get playing rugby. Straight down the middle, good take. Taken back into the half. Millfield with uh, Ian Davison, I think his name is. Another international under 18 player. So Hamilton looking to release their winger. It's got a bit of space here. Again, this is Caleb Tuco. Lots of options. Knocked forward by their number two, Tom McCarthy. Holly Catlin kicks it forward. Great tackle on uh, Peyton Spencer. Hamilton look to rebuild in their uh, just on their 10 meter line. It's their forward, Rarata Parta Palmer. So Hamilton use their forwards to take it up. 
playing advantage as referee Christo puts his arm out. Peyton Spencer offloads in the tackle nicely. Into touch, no advantage. We're coming back. For, I think it's an offside. So the kitchen's got a new ingredient. It's called a rugby ball. As Tom McCarthy looks to launch Hamilton. Taken nicely by Tom Hodgson. Hamilton set there. No. nicely, still moving forward. Hold on by Tom McCarthy. We've got a 10 metre rumble on it. It's getting towards the five metre line. Still got the ball, still moving forward. No, no, no. Finally goes to ground. Referee says number two coming in from the wrong side of Millfield gives a penalty to Hamilton. So Hamilton put the ball on the Millfield's five metre line. I was probably looking for the line out to do a catch and drive. Here's the jumper. Thomas Hodgson or... Yes, Thomas Hodgson that goes to. Oh, quick, uh, don't even go to the set. Now in the five metre zone. However, held up on the line, on, on the try line, so it's a kick from the baseline. Peyton Spencer looks to start the attack. Tackled. Well, Will Martin drives it forward. Put out by the number 10. 11 joins the line on the far side. Zach Coffey creating the extra line, uh, extra numbers. And Hamilton still driving forward, gets across the game line. Long pass back. Now Peyton Spencer finds the gap, steps, knocks it forward. So Millfield. Let's do a baseline kick. That's going to hang. Collected by Hiranaka Watatui. Spins it out. There's Zach again. Peyton joins the line, releases the winger. Brave defence from the uh, Millfield fullback, Tom Howlett. However, quickly ripped. And it goes players shouting for the ball. Hamilton players on the far right shout for the ball. But the fours want to take it forward. Now it comes. Here it comes. Big long pass. Knocked it forward. 
good pressure from the midfield coming off the line. Placements coming on. Number 21 for Millfield, who's N. Miller. And number 23, Jack Lee. Also on, I think. Uh, Still trying to understand why number nines twirl the rugby ball on their finger. Not sure what value it adds. Big uh, pushing and then going down. And collapsing. Tom Howlett looks to clear the lines. So, will Martin of Hamilton guilty of collapsing scrum causes the line out to be held here? Well taken by Millfield. Big hit coming in. So, Cooley Peloto starts his uh, attack on the line. Millfield coming in offside. Taken uh, quickly, but not where the referee wants it. So, Hamilton come back. Not rolling away in the tackle. Hamilton prepare for some small subs to come on. Cannon, here, let's go after it, you're in Cannon. Launches the ball to Millfield's 22. Number 16, Inga Cajon, Cajon, sorry. Replaces uh, Tom Leave McCarthy. Him Leave him yours, Alex. So they take it blind. Great feed to Liam Anderson who pounds his way forward over the game line. However, tremendous rip rucking by George Timmons wins the penalty for Millfield. Still under pressure in their 22. As Tom Hallett looks to push them forward. A good nudge, takes them to about two metres inside their own half. Again, this wind still persisting throughout the day. Ben Adobe waits for the line, here it comes. Good take from Millfield. Putting the space in, Milford looking to break through, but uh, Hamilton's defence holds strong. Good hands. Big pressure by Hamilton as they now drive over and win the ball, knocked it forward. It's all happening out there. Charge down. Tremendous skills shown by both both these uh, quality sides. Great uh, example of schoolboy rugby and the quality that's uh, being developed by the coaches. These players are exceptional in their own right. Just it here. And having a tremendous time. Huh? 
John Phelps sitting down in the background of that picture. CEO of World Schools Rugby, uh, World Schools Festival. Big put, big scrum. Millfield do well to retain that ball. Lovely little dummy, allows him to get five metres onwards. Ball presented nicely, I'd say, though uh, Hamilton coming over too quickly and from the side. Another quick take. Looking to... Oh, I would say that was a bit high, but hey-ho. That's a great kick. 15-22, well done. And that was Millfield's Mac Rickard who uh, did the honours there. Well done him. Puts uh, Millfield on the attack. There's some big units out there. And a water break for the second half is called. Millfield coach getting a little bit frustrated that the water isn't on. It's actually by his feet. So, uh, some facts about Millfield you may want to know. They've uh, produced 40 internationals. Um, they've been the St. Joseph's champions for two years in a row. And the first school to do that, back to back. And they were, last season, ranked number one in the world. So it isn't uh, this squad, but um, fantastic uh, rugby school well known certainly throughout the UK so the boys look on they're the boys who Millfield beat yesterday Hamilton split down into forwards and backs get the final briefings Afternoon tea for the ladies. So, attacking line out for Millfield. Good disruption. Ball got, still going backwards. Millfield with the ball. Tom Howlett takes it in. Releases. Will Stubbins to keep going. Nicely recycled. Long passes going out. Looking to spread it wide. Millfield putting a bit more space on the ball. Finding the gaps in uh, Hamilton's defence as they fly up. There's another one. And he's through. Great defence by uh, Hamilton. And that's got to be a penalty for not rolling away from the tackle. One could actually say fairly cynical. So, <laughs> here we go. Harry Beagle says, I'm coming for you. But it goes the other way. Might be a wise move. So Millfield, pick and go, driving forward, laid back, still carrying it on. Ball still there. George Cottrell, I think that who's on now. This is number 17, Hugo Orman, driving forward. Ball still in uh, Millfield's possession, still driving forward. Hamilton, slow to move things. 
also offside, I'd say. Not behind the back, back feet. Quick ball. Again, hands not behind the baseline, so that would be offside, I think. Foot offside there as well. That's uh, Peyton Spencer, I think, who's offside. Referee hasn't seen it. Millfield pressing this last inches to get it across the line. Again, looked like a high tackle that. Spins it wide, drops it, still ball, still live. Too much power by Hamilton. Flip back. Player being held by Hamilton off the ball. Stubbins drives it forward. Millfield regroup. A little chip forward. Intent was right. However, referee has so it's a 22 Whoa. dropout. Whoa. 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 Great pressure by Whoa. Millfield, great defence by Hamilton. Around about 12 minutes to go. Big kick down. Let it go. Is it going to go all the way? Yes, it does. We go all the way back there. So back we go. Ladies trying to get a bit of coordinated chanting going. For, for Millfield. So, on uh, Hamilton's 22, Millfield still pressing for its first try. Hamilton leading 7 0 as we approach the 50 minute mark of this game. And a free kick taken quickly, looking for a support, still not there, there it comes. Millfield pressing hard. He's isolated and he's lost the ball. However, neck roll, I think, by Millfield causes the penalty to go to Hamilton. Hamilton replacement is about to come on. Wyndham Patawa clears the lines, relieves some pressure. Simon Craggs marks the uh, line out. Referee Christo waits for the players to arrive. Tap through, but collected by Milford, but dropped. Now they come forward. Oh, great offloads, but they're back in, called back. No full bench looks on. Take Reg there with the ball. Played for Odyssey this morning. So, ball knocked on by Millfield in the line out. Hamilton's put in.
So just a reminder, if uh, Millfield do score, and it's a draw at uh, full time, it's the first team that scored the try will go through. Some loose tackling allows them 12 to, to get across the game line and make some uh, powerful thing. However, Hamilton not rolling away. Some hands in the run. Tom Howlett looking to apply the pressure, getting the ball into the Hamilton 22. About a meter in. Again, stolen by uh, Hamilton, who retained the ball. However, it's one back by uh, Millfield, who now released themselves down the blind side. Number 22 there. George Cottrell takes it in. Jackal away by the ball. Hamilton uh, retain it and look to clear their lines. Straight down the middle. Now, Millfield start their attack. A little chip through. And a bit of a late tackle by Hamilton's. I think Mitch. Uh, is that Mitch Stringer? I think so. Tom Howlett looks to uh, get Millfield back in Hamilton's 22. However, the wind uh, doesn't help him, and he's just short by about 10 metres. About seven minutes to go in this enthralling semi-final. Ball a bit far, collected by, went backwards, says referee. Peyton Spencer on the ball. Oof. A good drive by uh, Hamilton's Liam Anderson. Ball kicked through. Millfield's uh, Iona Davis taken in. Lays the ball back well. Everybody, that poor winger taking on three Hamilton players. Lovely dummy, lovely dummy, puts Mitch Strang under the posts and seals the game most probably for Hamilton. Here he goes, picks up the ball, dummies it, steps inside, leaves the... Uh, George Timmons, number eight of Millfield Stranding. There he goes, whoop, even got the camera. <laughs> He's happy about that and so he should be. Wyndham Patua to close the game out. Five minutes to go, make it 14 points. So, what can Millfield do in the last five minutes of this match? Mitch Swan, sorry, is the successful try scorer. Bit of calm. Great take, Josh. Come on, 
Referee Christo now says players retire. Calls for number eight. Tackling in the air. He goes to the naughty chair. He won't be coming on for the rest of this game. Yellow card is six minutes. I, mean, I think we've got about three minutes left. So, Hamilton clears the lines, takes them a metre beyond their 10 metre line. Still in Hamilton, Hamilton's uh, half. Millfield looking to disrupt the line. Not straight. So, seven man scrum against an already dominating uh, Hamilton scrum. Requires a quick feed and a quick uh, recycling of the ball from the scrum. Millfield coach directing from the uh, scrum half says no I don't want to do that as I say they needed a quick ball they've got it well done good step by Ann Davis. Corner, corner, Wendy. Good recycling. This is number 13 powering through for Hamilton. Okay, to Avala. Good recycling the ball. Steps inside. Oh, oh, still got it. Oh, there we are. A little bit of flair. And decides to throw it out. About as useful as a chocolate frying pan on that. So it looks like uh, Milford's has re-established good line out. Number 17 there. Breast and leg takes it, the ball and sets up a recycle. Nice hands from Millfield. Whoa, now it's Millfield's turn. Players pretty tired now. They've worked hard, both sets of team. Players from each team have worked incredibly hard. Almost time, I'd say. Nice line out. There's the big gap. This is number 16. Inga Kokar going through, still going through, still powering through. Drop forward. <coughs> Five minutes. Must be about so the last phase of the game, I'd say. No, I got. They're not in shift in me down here. I, I had one, I had Hilla and one there down here. Yeah. By myself. Yeah. So we we yeah, expanded yeah, to one. So I've like, got a deep pick. I'm like, yeah. I'm not predicting it. Hamilton subs talk about their experiences on the ball. Game just uh, in the final throws. Can Millfield run it from their five metre line and score a great end? Oh. Again, Hamilton collapses. Quickly taken. Millfield on the run now with the overlap. Are they going to go? Davis kicks forward, 
not sure if that was a sensible move. That should uh, call time, I'd imagine. No, referee wants to play on. Get up here, show some energy, Reds, get up. I think, uh, referee Christo enjoying his time out there. I think it's his first match of the festival. So, Millfield, what can you do from here? Nice slide out. The forwards look to break the uh, defensive line. A little wrap round, another kick. Not working. And that's it. As they go into the final against Grey College. And uh, Millfield will play Cardiff and Vale for the third place. And England v Wales, uh, third bronze medal. Great to see the players sportingly congratulating each other. The match was actually closer than uh, the score reflects. Congratulations to both sets of players. As we sign off on this uh, last match on the second day of the World Festival and we look forward to joining you on Saturday. Thank you for signing in. <laughs>